need to start paying attention to the good guys. They'll come up to you more. You need to stop rewarding the bad boys. You need to teach them. So here's some advice. Don't put the goods out there unless someone earns it. (laughs) By earn it, I mean they have to be invested in you. They have to take you out on dates. They have to call you. They have to prioritize you. They have to make you feel good. Maybe they open the car door for you. Imagine that. Something right out of 1985. Maybe they pay for your dinner. Maybe they call you, make sure, oh, hey, how did it go? Yeah, I had a really good time. Pick up the phone, not a text. Phone. Not 2022. <laughs> Gentlemanly. They treat you with respect. You feel good about that situation. All that needs to happen before you put the goods out there. And in the end, you will win. So just keep holding out until the right girl comes nice along. Nice guys always win. They oh. always win. If nice truly means nice, you had the wrong girl. Yeah, you might not win in your early 20s, but let me tell you, Every girl will get sick of the games and the douchebags, and nice guys will win. They always win. They always win. I want a nice guy, okay? I'm sick of the games. Like, you saw, I'm, I shut it down. Like, I'm not into it. Yeah. I want a nice guy. The nice guy win. A nice guys, for three years, it's not cool, and then it's cool. Yes. It doesn't matter who the girl is. Like, when a guy's ready to settle down, the first girl he looks at will be his wife. It's not about the person. It's about the time in their life. Yeah. Like, sometimes I think, like, girls pick guys, like, they look for their soulmates, and guys just, <laughs> like, find their girls based off timing. Yeah, it's like, okay, I want a girlfriend, I'm ready, like, she'll do. Yeah. That's why girls need to stop trying to change guys, because it doesn't matter who you are, it literally matters on the timing for the man. Mm, you guys right, but you guys good with that? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I had to start with those three today because uh, I have uh, ulterior motives uh, and uh, I, I want to get started. I'm, I'm not going to fool around today. I'm probably, if, if I seem like I'm a little low energy today, it's probably because I have been sick since uh, really, uh, let's see, July 4th, somewhere around there. Yeah, like a wonderful, wonderful gift for uh, the 4th of July was uh, I got something if it's not COVID, then it's something else i'm not really sure but we'll find out later on i didn't really care <clears throat> excuse me however today is going to be fueled by devil mountain coffee and um i had some of that goo you know like that stuff that's like sort of like you take before you like go um what is it you go running or you go bicycling yeah that kind of stuff all right here we go Oh yeah, she been writing me. Yeah, no, not quite. <laughs> not last week. That's for damn sure. Uh, been too sick for that, my friends. My friends. All right. Um, today, I have had so many requests to do a breakdown video of the. Uh, I guess it's called Grilling. Is the name of the the show? It's on Standout TV, and it is what's that? What's this chick's name? Shion or something like that. I'm, I have trouble pronouncing the name. I, who even knows what it is at this point? Um, however, uh, no, I don't have Andrew on with me today. However, just uh, don't don't think that this is entirely a put on. Uh, I did talk to Andrew before I put this out there, before I told him I said I was going to do this show today. And he's like, yeah, we got to get together. So it's scheduling right now. We will be getting together at some point. Um, most likely a midweek show, uh, depending on what his schedule looks like. Because as you guys know, I do my main, uh, this show, uh, usually 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I don't know if that works out for him in Romania. So actually, I need to add that time clock up here to my clock over here. So, but uh, we are, we've been talking about it. Um, I know uh, Justin Waller and Sterling Cooper have been uh, talking, you know, they've been working with him, talking to him as well. Um, I think a lot of people think like, like there's some sort of like friction between myself and, and Andrew, and there's absolutely no, for no friction whatsoever. Um, but I think it's funny because he's like, he's everywhere right now, right? I mean, Sam, Andrew's been around for, for God, I mean, the first. <laughs> was the first time I did was it like 2017 2018 I think is when I first uh had uh, Andrew on and then I had Tristan and then I had Andrew on a couple more times after that and I promise you I won't bring up uh, the uh well I'll bring her up once I won't bring up Michaela on this show whatsoever all right so I, I promise you that there's your promise for today this is not a Michaela show today whatsoever um, oh, good. We got Kenya in the house. Hey, Kenya. Um, let's see. It's now 11 p.m. in Romania. Yes, yeah, he'd probably be awake right now, right? I don't know. We'll see. Um, we will. I, I am going to uh, definitely have him on there. He did, actually. Well, it wasn't him, actually. You know, let me let me clarify this really quickly here. Adventuresome. 
You accused Tate of spamming you and calling you a dweeb. Well, that was way back when in the very first of, um, let's see, when we first started doing Rule Zero, it wasn't just me, by the way. It was uh, all the guys in Rule Zero. So it wasn't just Rolla Tomasi. It was Troy and John and, and Ryan and everyone else. So, uh, But it was, a, let's just say, overzealous uh, top G, top, top G uh, fanboys. And uh, recently, as you guys probably know, I would not be surprised to see them in uh, in the chat here as well. But like on pretty much damn near every show that I go on, I'm followed by chat bots or I'm, tr- I'm followed by uh, comment bots. And, uh, and I have discovered why that is. And it's not, it's not directly related to Andrew and Tristan. It's, uh, it's the guys who are sort of doing like affiliate marketing with him and his fanboys and the people who are in Hustlers University who want to, well, let's just say they're financially incentivized to make the most of it. So it's not directly from the two of those guys. It's really from the guys who are like their, their very large fan base who follow me around because they figure that if I'm on some big ass show, then they ought to be on it too. So, uh, much as I, uh, much as I appreciate the enthusiasm, uh, that, that's where that ended up. So, yes, there you go. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Tyler Crumb. Yeah, the last time, let's see, I'm trying to remember the last time I did a show with uh, with Andrew was in December of last year. And that was when I was on there with Sterling, myself, Andrew, and, um, and uh, Justin Waller were on there. And Tristan was there. He didn't come on the show with us, but he was there for most of the time that we were there. And, um, you know, they've been doing a lot of back and forth. And and Tristan's, you know, he, what's interesting to me is Tristan goes on these shows that are like, like I don't, I've never even heard of before. And I think it's fascinating because I was just on, um, if, you ha- if you don't know about this yet, I was just on with um, Maz Hakim, M-A-Z-H-A-K-I-M. And that is now available on uh, on YouTube. Just look up M A Z. H A K I M Maz Hakim. She's like one of the, uh, I guess she's one of the top talk show hosts in, uh, in Dubai. I didn't even realize that, but anyways, so it was very early in the morning for me. And I think it was like pretty late at night for her. I think it's, it was almost like a 12 or 13 hour difference between us. And so I did this show with her and, um, I was, it was, it was interesting to me cause I can get on something like that. And then suddenly I see Andrew on like grilling and I'm like, and then I, I know, as you guys probably already know, I did an interview with Leia um, uh, Heilpern, Heilpern, which is a, an interesting name for a, a chick from the UK, by the way. Anyways, um, I did a show with her while I was there in, I was in, let's see, Miami at the end of June. And that should be coming up as well. Am I going to Dubai? No, I'm not going to. I mean, if you want to fly me out there, flew me out. Anybody want to flew me out there? I'll, I'll be happy to go. Um, there's a possibility I might be going to the UK. I don't know. Uh, keep that in the back of your back of your heads, back pocket right there. Um, however, I have not. Um, let's see, where else am I going? Uh, I will most likely be in Istanbul <laughs> in Turkey at some point. Uh, I know I've got an open invite from... Uh, from Dr. Red Pill, from my good friend, Dr. Oz. And I don't mean that Dr. Oz. I mean like, you know, Dr. Oz, Ozatork. I can't even pronounce his name. He just calls himself Dr. Oz. Anyways, Dr. Oz was on with myself and Fresh and Myron um, on the show that never was, unfortunately. Actually, it was a pretty good show for us for the hour and a half that we were on it. But uh, I wish we could have kept going, but we had sound issues during that one. So I have, uh, let's so here's my plans before we get started today. I am going to get uh, Andrew Tate in here. I've got, um, I'm going to do Dr. Oz. I'll have him on as well. Um, I am starting a new panel show, not a, not a real zero or anything like that. I'm just doing it with, with myself. And, um, and uh, let's see, Kevin, Kevin Sabo, uh, maybe Torsha. I don't know. Um, possibly uh, Giovanni and some of the other guys, some of the the newer guys, the new, new, the young bloods, I guess, that I have been working with uh, will most likely be uh, included in that panel show. But th- I'm, I'm tossing around the idea of doing a midweek panel show, but it's just like for the youngins. Um, and that's, I'll still continue to do Rule Zero, which by the way, unfortunately, I haven't been able to go. I wasn't able to get on Rule Zero because I've been sick. So, um, and God damn it, I, I cannot believe um, I have had thanks a lot i appreciate your uh your enthusiasm there dude but uh, i'm gonna have to put you on hold there my friend much as i like it um dude really stop that's good jose thank you very much i you're much appreciated 
<laughs> was it good yesterday? I didn't. I did not catch it yesterday. I know. Um, I think it was uh, Paul Benjamin had it had the the hosting duties, and I think Aaron Clary as well. Now that's another thing. Aaron Clary and myself will be meeting up live together in South Dakota within a week. <laughs> so look for that. I don't know if we're going to do a show from his place or what, what we don't have anything like set in stone right now, but I am going to go visit uh, Aaron Clary, uh, not this week, but the, the following week. So that's, that's another thing that I have coming up as well. And I got a few other irons in the fire just to let you guys get going. All right. So, um, Today, I wanted to talk about this video. I'm going to just riff on this for a little while. I got a couple of things. I, I, uh, if you notice the, uh, the intro videos, the very first one was Jedediah Abila, and she is uh, sort of the, uh, I guess, the new sweetheart <laughs> at Valuetainment. And I've been sort of waiting for my moment with her, and I think the moment is kind of like now. <laughs> so I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to riff on some of her stuff uh, a little bit later. But uh, before I get to that, I do want to talk about uh, Andrew Tate and the increasing popularity that he's got here. Now, when I watched this, I had so many people saying, when are you going to do this video? When are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? And I, I, I wasn't like trying to put it off. I would have probably done it the week before, but I was just kind of sick. So uh, I probably would have done it for my midweek show. But I thought, you know, I'm going to carry this over for this one. So I'm going to riff on this a little bit. Now, the, what, the way I'm going to approach this is... I want you guys, I like the last time I did a, a, a video that was similar to this, where I'm, I'm kind of like doing a play by play, kind of like the John Madden, a game. I did this with John from Modern Life Dating. Gosh, what about two years ago, three years ago? And I think it was for right around this first or the second body language mastery course that he was doing. And he was going on this one show and it was a, a Twitch show. And it was these two girls who would invite people on and you could get on. I don't know if it cost you anything to get on, but um, they would have people come on and um, they would sort of like ask them out on dates. Right. It was like a date show, but it wasn't a date show. It was kind of like this virtual date show. So you could have some random dude that just could call in or, or, or not call. In, uh, he could just like sort of come on and they would put him in the chat and they put or excuse me, they put him in the video and everything. And then it was like his. 10 minutes or however long he had to just sort of chat these girls up. And then if the people in the chat didn't like his game, this is brilliant, by the way, if they didn't like his game, they would like vote him off the Island. Right. And you had to like give them like a $25 super chat or some, some kind of some amount of money would get them kicked off of the, uh, off of the panel. So they'd be in this, in the, in the chat and somebody would like chat in. I, I don't know if it was the minimum was like 25 bucks or 50 bucks, but the guy would go on there and he would try to be as personal as possible. Now they had more than one guy on at the same time, <clears throat> but it was really not so much the girls as it was the everybody that was in the chat. And so they would boot off, they would boot off anybody who was, um, I don't know, I guess maybe these guys felt threatened or whatever, but it was like such a, it was such a, uh, an interesting concept for a show. Now, I don't know if it's feasible now considering how Twitch is about like, um, uh, just, I don't know, content, whatever. But, uh, John from Modern Life Dating went on there and he lasted a good long time and he, he, uh, he recorded the video and he put it on his channel and he and I went and did sort of this play by play of it. And I haven't done that in a while, but that, ch that show that I did with John on his channel was one of his most well-watched, uh, shows. So we're watching this and I'm going, okay, here, do you see what you did there? Did you see what you did there? And so it was this live kind of thing. Now, I, I, I wanted to do this with Andrew because Andrew's a freaking master at this. That's why I named today's show, you know, we are what is top G, top, top G game. Um, and I, I, I started watching. I watched through the whole thing. and I took notes as I was going through because I always do my homework, as you guys know. And um, oh, uh, Miles, I'll, I'll dig that up for you. I don't know. Uh, probably John would know better. Than, I would have to ask him. It was a long time ago and it's probably in his back in his archives somewhere. Uh, however, the, the popularity of that show was great because it was like showing like live in real time what John was doing, now, whether or not he was like sort of conscious of what he was doing is, is you know, anybody's guess, but he did it pretty well. And so I said, okay, you know why, you know why this worked, you know why that worked. Well, I can sort of do the same thing with Andrew and this girl here because technically this grilling thing is supposed to be a virtual date. And I don't know where the hell this came up from, but I know that, um, what was it? Uh, Abba from Abba and Preach. And then that one girl who was on Fresh and Fit, and I can't remember her name now, but they'd gone on some sort of like virtual date. Like that was, it was supposed to be this, I don't know, variety. I don't know if it's a variety show, but it was a podcast with both Abba and her on it. And it was like a virtual date kind of thing. 
And so I was um, I was looking at this and I go, this is an interesting com- concept because this is like called grilling. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking to myself, I'm going, you know, whenever I'm looking at guys sort of throw a spit in game or I look at guys uh, like sort of out in the wild. Now, I'll give you a little bit of background here because a lot of people will go, well, you've been you've been married for 25 years, almost 26, 25 years. How do you know anything about this? You're not that you're not out there, you know, in the trenches. Right. Well, no, but I have been in the sense that I've been like Jane Goodall or Diane Fossey, like gorillas in the mist, right? I'm like, right, you know, I love, oh, watching the, what the human, what are the humans doing? Interesting behavior, right? Now you have to understand something about my background. So I'm just going to throw this out there for a lot of you who don't know this already. I have been working in, well, I had worked in casino marketing and I worked in uh, wine and spirits for the last, mm, almost as long as I've been married. So there you go. Um, and so during that time, uh, I'm responsible for brand management, brand identity, advertising, art direction, uh, photography, web design, videography, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> name it. And I probably did it. But one of the things that I got into was doing promotional stuff. So I'm doing promos for casinos. I'm doing promos for liquor. I'm doing like martini fests. I'm doing uh, on premise. I'm doing off premise. I'm always out there doing this stuff. And Am I out there running game on girls all the time? No, I'm not. However, I am taking notes because you know why? I'm the only sober guy right there. And I'm watching, I'm watching, uh, uh, you know, people go from sort of like maybe a little bit buzzed to being like, um, uh, let's see, uh, maybe like, you know, blacked out drunk. Right. <laughs> and watching, watching how things sort of interact between like girls and guys and like, okay, that guy's trying to get with that girl. That girl wants that girl's attracted to those guys over there. I would probably have made a very good wingman back then, but it was more like taking notes than what I used to do is I was to take those notes. I would take all that kind of information. I'm like, I'm, it was just me sort of like being curious. I'm like study of human nature. Right. And I happened to be on the SoSwap forums back then. I was a moderator back then. And that's how we had conversations. So like when I was talking to you guys, and you guys have heard me say this before on, on Rule Zero as well, when I'm ever, whenever I'm at like, say, a, a liquor promo, and, and I'm working with like some very beautiful women, I'm working with some very beautiful men too, because I have to pick guys as well, because there happens to be girls that want to drink as well, and they want to get a, a sexy bartender. So I got I got to pick those guys out as well as my poor girls. So I'm getting this going, I'm, I'm watching this and watching this interaction. And taking sort of mental notes and bringing it back to the boards, and we're having these discussions, and um, and and just simply watching, you know, watching the the interactions. Really, I mean, a lot of that is just simply observed behavior. And I did this for a very, very long time. And so when I talk about stuff, people go, "Well, you know, you're not out there trying to get numbers." Oh, well, nobody gets numbers now, anyways. Okay, but if you want to know where a lot of the where the let's say infield experience of Rolo Tomasi comes from, it comes from being the only sober guy in the club, because I had to work these events, man, like till two, three, four in the morning, you know, clean up, make sure everybody gets there. And you probably heard me say this before. I, I just to finish that thought. Uh, you probably heard me say this before on Rule Zero, where I was like, I'm warning my guys who are working for me on an event. I'll say, if you see a chick who's like blacked out drunk in the on the sidewalk or whatever, do not call her an Uber. Do not call her a taxi. Do not be a hero. Do not, God forbid, you put her in your car and give her a ride home because you feel sorry for her. First off, she made her decisions and she's in the gutter because that's the decision that she made. That's number one. Number two is this, is if you go and you do something like that, God knows what she's going to remember the next day, Right. She's not going to know whether it was you or whatever. She's not going to appreciate you because I've had guys get into like real serious legal trouble for being a white knight, for being a good dude. And so, so where did that come from? How did Rolo even know any of this? Well, the fact is, is because I've seen guys and I actually had to walk through, you know, hold the hands of guys who were just like breaking down because they didn't do anything and the girl couldn't remember stuff and the boyfriend, her boyfriend's jealous. And so there's all this, you know, he said, she said bullshit, Right. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, guys, here's the, this is the, the standard now. Okay. Don't be a hero. And that's where that comes from. It comes from me being out in the field and watching all this stuff. So with that in mind, people go, oh, how can Rolla write a book on game? Well, that's how I can write a book on game. I have the background in it. I've been doing this for 20 plus, well, almost 21 years now, 20 and a half for sure. I've been doing this really since 2002 and, um, you know, as far as uh, the, uh, I, I hate to have to give my bona fides, you know, 
now and then, but I guess I kind of have to, especially for today's um, today's show, because when I got when I get into this and I start doing the breakdowns and understanding this, get Royce. I would love to, man. I would very much love to. But the problem is, is Royce hasn't been active for a very long time. I can give you the background on that at some point too. <laughs> I wish I wish Hartiste was actually around still, but he's not. Actually, the Royce that you're talking about right now hasn't been active since 2009. The people who took over the Chateau are not Royce. <laughs> Just so you know. Because Royce got doxxed back in 2009. That's why. I remember that. It was myself. We were the, that was one of the three R's. It was Roosh, Royce, and Rolo. And if you didn't, I had the second most trafficked blog in the Manosphere at that time, I think, because it was myself and it was Royce. Now, Roosh had, he didn't, this was prior to him having like uh, Return of Kings, which is now defunct. Prior to Return of Kings, there was in Malafiti and then there was also the Spearhead. And that was where a lot of guys, those were like kind of like aggregate blogs where pe people would come together and start talking and stuff. Um, but mine was much more focused and I think a lot of people appreciated my stuff cause I, I, I crafted my posts. I didn't just post to, to be posting. Um, I am, in case you're wondering, yes, I am getting back to the blog at some point. Um, as soon as the audible book for book four is our book five is out, which by the way, it is with audible. I posted on the, on, if you haven't seen it, it's on my Twitter feed right now. The book is with audible. As soon as they say it's good, you will trust me, you will know because <laughs> I will make an ever loving big deal out of it. However, that was back then. This is now. So that's how I, I come to a lot of my own analysis. That's how I was trying to explain and update game techniques and understanding of what, what exactly is game. Now, one more thing I have to give you as a caveat before we start here. Um, I, like, I like Andrew quite a bit. And Andrew is the product of uh, circumstances just as I am. Okay? So... When I'm out in the clubs and I'm watching this happen and I'm, you know, hand selecting women to go and be my poor girls or even, you know, guys to be bartenders and stuff like that. I have to be up on top of things. You want, want to know why I can be in my 50s and still talk about this kind of stuff. That's how. OK, I've never been out of the game, really. Um, I've just been <laughs> I went from an active participant to um, to a uh, involved, a participating observer, let's just say. But I am, the, when when I talk about myself, when I talk about my marriage, when I talk about my past, when I talk about my rock star 20s, when I talk about that kind of stuff, that's my own personal experience. And I rarely do, do you hear me use those as examples for universals. So I just want to throw that out there really quick. Uh, uh, and the reason why I am is because Andrew also is a product of his own past experiences and what he's what he's been about for a very long time. A lot of people get rubbed the wrong way with Andrew. I get it. OK. In fact, this girl, the, the indignation on this girl's face is like is priceless. OK. The minute I get him in here, hopefully it'll be this Wednesday. When I get um, when I get Andrew in here and we start talking about this stuff, I cannot wait to sort of pick his brain about the uh, the what went on behind the scenes and all this. Now, then, the other thing you have to remember in this uh, in this video is um, that this is I think a lot of people thought that this was staged or maybe certain parts of it were staged, and in a sense, it may have been. That's kind of why I want to bring him in here and talk about it. However. The thing is, is that when we're talking about like, OK, here's what he's saying. Here's how she's reacting. A lot of people will go, well, that's because they're on camera. Right. OK, understandable. However, the interaction and the interplay between them, how he leads with his, his talking, she doesn't know what's going to come out of his mouth. There's, this is not scripted on the part of, like, say, Andrew. OK. Now, if you go and you take a show that's, that's like this, where they're kind of on this virtual date and you compare that with something like The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, there's it's night and day. It's apples and oranges. These are just completely two different things. You want to know why this format is actually, I would say, will be more successful than um, than something like uh, the um, what do you put? What are you throwing at me now? Oh, Sean Reynolds. That's what right. Sean. Sean. Is it supposed to be Sean? Sean Reynolds is the is the chick that's in here. Thanks for that, uh, Sam. Now, Sean and uh, and Andrew, you can see the tension between the two of them here. But I think it's, we're going to I'm going to kind of tear up. A, <laughs> there's a reason why I started with Jedediah in today's show. We'll, we'll come back to why that is. But the, the, the interplay between the two of them, you can tell that it is not scripted. 
That's number one. Now, the way he's going to lead here, and a lot of guys, let's just let me head you off at the pass here, uh, chat, because I know that that's what this is what's going to happen. Because what's going to happen next is people are going to go, well, look at him. He's got money. He's jacked and juicy AF. And, um, you know, he's he's Andrew Tate. Of course, he's the top G. So so she's just going to be magically attracted to him anyways. It's the same thing that everybody said about Justin Waller when I was interviewing Justin. And uh, of course, you know, he's six. Well, Justin's six foot three. And by the way, Andrew is not six foot four. Maybe Tristan is, but I don't know what it is about like the manosphere. But like every dude that I do work with is in the six foot category. Myron Gaines, six foot two. Fresh is the only one who is the same height as me. <laughs> Maybe that's how we get along so well. But if you look at like Andrew Tate, he's got he's well above six. He's got to be six two. Uh, Justin Waller, six foot three. I'm pretty sure. Uh, George Gammon, six foot two, six foot three. He might even actually he might even be taller than Justin. Uh, even Robert Kiyosaki is six foot one or six two. So whenever you guys see me standing next to any of these guys, don't think, oh, Rolo's a manlet. No, these it's just these dudes are that tall. They're like tower, they tower over everybody. So there you might have a case. And we're gonna talk about height here today, too. Because yes, was I baiting you in with the game Trump's looks? Yeah, but yes and no. Because here's what I'm going to go. Here's here's what I'm going to today's let's say today's operative question is this: When I'm watching this, and I'm thinking out about the the interplay between them now. Now we're looking at a let's see a confluence of money, muscles, and game. Right. So you've got um, you've got Andrew Tate, who's you know a millionaire. Okay, he's got looks. Everybody, but before I even started the show, when you guys were sitting in the in the waiting room, everybody goes, "Well, you know, he's got a lot of money, and he's, he's six foot six foot hundred. You know, of course he's going to get laid, right?" Okay, so he's he's got the looks, okay, he's got the money, and he definitely has the game, okay. Now, of those three, which one is the most important? I'm going to argue uh, once again, like I have since 2013 when I published my first. Actually, it's from before that, but. At least since 2013, when I published my very first book, I said this as well. I said money, uh, excuse me, affluent, uh, it was looks, affluence, and game have at least two, okay, of those, of those two, of those three things. Now, this was like before we started talking about money, muscles, game, and frame, blah, blah, blah. Okay. This was back in 2011, is when I wrote the, when I wrote the blog post, but it was, it was affluence, which I, I include status in with it with money. So therefore affluence and then looks, of course, looks count looks matter. Is it all looks? No, it is not all looks. Okay. Game does game matter. Absolutely. It does. Because if you can't be congruent with your looks and your game or with your looks and your money and everything else, if you're not what that woman is expecting, then that's going to ruin you. That's going to ruin you, man. And I will explain to you why that is here. However, when we talk about the confluence of all three of those things, it struck me when I'm watching this, when I'm watching this, uh, this interplay between the two of them, that there are synergies. And I hate to use that term because I know it's like new age, of oh, synergy, but there are, there are synergies where one aspect plays off of the other one. So if you're a good looking dude and you don't quite have enough money, but you're like motivated and you've got good game, well, that synergy between the game and the looks can make up for the money, Right. Or you can have the guy who's like, you can have a dude who's like, say, Jeff Bezos. Like, I mean, look at the guys who are the richest men in the world right now. You got Elon Musk, who, by the way, screwed the pooch, literally, once again, <laughs> um, is now, you know, responsible. And now we suddenly find out he's responsible for twins. He's, you know, you know bugs out of the, uh, the, t the Twitter deal. Um, people have, have just read me the riot act. Ran me up the flagpole. There you go. It's your first one of the day, my friends. Ran me up the flagpole. Say my name. Because I called, I called Elon Musk a beta male. Or I said, Jeff Bezos is a beta male. You know what's funny? Is nobody gives me grief when I go and I talk and I say, like, Bill Gates is a beta male. And he's like, he is. He's a, absolutely very much a beta male. You look at the richest guys. Like, look at the, the let's just look at the, the top four or five richest men in the world. I, I don't know who like number five or number four or five would be, but if we're going to talk about Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and and uh, and Bill Gates, if you're looking, if you're looking at those guys, you're gonna you're gonna find that they are mostly, most definitely, very much the most blue pill guys you'll ever know. All they have is money. That's all they've got. That's all there is. There's no phys there's no physique. There's no game. It's a lot of money. 
can they still get laid? Can they still make it? Yeah, of course they can. My first question, of course, I, and this was when I was on Adam Sosnick shows, I said, you know, if, if Jeff Bezos wanted to have a new chick every day, he could do that. And if you look at a guy like, say, Dan Bilzerian, and yes, I know he buys his chicks. Let's just hold your horses. OK, but Dan Bilzerian, I mean, even if he didn't, he didn't he wouldn't need to buy his chicks. Right. <laughs> I mean, he walked. He essentially has built a person, a brand of personality around being a high value man. Right. He's the guy. And whether it is whether it's true, or it's not. The impression is what we think that like that's congruent with what we would expect from a guy that looks like that, has the money like that. And now he's got the chicks like that. Remember what I've always said is that that for a, a high value guy, alpha male, a powerful man, powerful men throughout history have been defined by three different things. And what are those again? I'm sure you remember this. It is territory, resources and access, exclusive access. He skips leg day. He does exclusive access to fertile women, whether that's virgins in the you know, forbidden city guarded by eunuchs or whatever, doesn't matter. Those are the three things that have defined powerful men. And by the way, powerful primates, whenever you hear somebody saying this, because I've, I've, I've heard other people sort of quote me or sort of paraphrase me on this. Don't for a second think that it's coming out of their mouth and don't for a second think it's coming out of my mouth either. OK, I am actually paraphrasing from a book called Alpha God by Dr. Hector Garcia, who said exactly that throughout history. Powerful men are defined by territory, resources, and access to fertile women. That's how it works. Emperors, kings, tribal chieftains, name it. Okay. Now, what are those trends? Like, let's just think about that for a second. Now, by the way, the reason why Hector Garcia brought that up was because he was not necessarily making uh, comparisons, but he was making comparisons to primates, such as like chimps, gorillas. Um, I even but obos to an extent, right? He was looking at how there was an one central alpha male, and then there was the beta males who would sort of like tend to the needs of the uh, of the females until they went into estrus or until they got hot because of the you know it's time to go and twerk for the for the silverback you know alpha that guy, and then oh, that that ape by the way, <laughs> um, and then you know the, for for the beta males their sexual access was based on performance. It was based on goods. It was services provided, watching over the kids while they went and had sex with, with, the, with the alpha again. Um, and uh, from that, Dr. Hector Garcia came to those conclusions, which is that, you know, throughout history, powerful men, resources, territory, and, and exclusive sexual access to fertile young females, whether that's macaque, 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 macaque monkeys, or silverback gorillas. I don't know exactly. So now here's a, here we go. Uh, oh boy. We already got the first height. Okay. We're gonna talk about that too. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't, by the way, I, I love this. I, there's a, um, there's a, you know how we always talk about the female delusion calculator. There's also the male delusion or the male reality calculator, which is kind of interesting too. Uh, I, it's a nice, uh, let's just say uh, addendum to, to the female delusion calculator. But uh, the reason why I'm talking about this right now is because if you look at territory resources and access, we're almost looking at like sort of that same triumvirate, right? Money muscles game. So money would definitely be resources. I would also maybe we'd throw territory into there as well. Um, you know, and with that comes status. And then you got to remember that between all of those three money muscles and game, or if you're talking whatever it is, like when I talk about affluence and like when I was first coming on to this, um, it, it struck me that there are sort of like synergies between those aspects of a guy. So like the powerful guy who has access to a lot of chicks, uh, Dan Bilzerian, right? He's got access to a lot of new, new bile, fertile, young women who follow him from exotic location to exotic location. There's your territory right there. And clearly the private jets and the yachts and everything else imply at least the perception that he's got a lot of money. There's your three things, right? Territory, chicks, and money, resources. Right? So that's what defines powerful. Now, even if, even if it's completely false, even if, like, because people will say, and I'm sure we probably already had him in the chat. I can't pay attention to everybody right now because I'm a one man show. But even in the chat right now, people are going to go, well, yeah, he buys his chicks. Oh, he must be taking trend. Oh, he, his resources are illegitimate because he makes his money through, what is it? Through, uh, through weed, like he's uh, CBD. Uh, uh, no, was it, um, what's the heck is the name of his, 
Oh, um, the hell is it? It's not inspired. It's something else. What is it? Uh, something ignite, ignite weed, <laughs> ignite marijuana. <laughs> uh, he got into that back in the early, yeah, and to his credit, right? So, so people are going to say, well, his money's illegitimate. His chicks are illegitimate. Uh, and so because his money's illegitimate, then his territory is illegitimate too. Cause he doesn't actually own those places that he goes to those exotic places. Well, maybe he does, who knows? But the, the, the fact remains is that the perception is that he's a powerful man. Right, you look at him. The guy's jacked. Let's get. I mean, let's be real. I can't. I can't. Honestly, I can't believe how like people go. Well, he must have sold, sold to the devil and the devil, because it's like like how else does a guy get you know <laughs> how else does a guy get that that jacked and juicy man and stays that way. I mean, he is like always in like what is this? What do you think Dan Bilzerian's like body fat percentage is at any one particular time? Uh, anyways, I, I want to point that out because. A lot of people say that the confluence of those three things is really what's going to sort of make that is going to set that guy apart. Andrew himself is that. I mean, is he as big as Dan Bilzerian? No, but he's still in good shape. Can he fight? Yes, he has a capacity for violence. He we, clearly we know that. Uh, does he have money? Yes. Uh, does he have territory? Well, I mean, he's got a <laughs> in Romania. He does, <laughs> but uh, he and Tristan have. I'm, I'm sure that they own property somewhere, right? Uh, and if they don't, they go to exotic locations, and it's certainly the same perception that he does. And so that I wanted to throw that out there before we get started here, because I think that confluence of money, muscles, and game, or you know whatever the you know territory, resources, and chicks, right, that plays a part in our perception, our innate understanding of what makes for a high value guy. And it also is something I believe that is like sort of instinctive is. Um, uh, innate to women's understanding of men. Now you've probably heard this before. This is an old, this is from the eighties, by the way, I'm going to date myself here. However, do I have a link tree to all my studies? Uh, well, I, what would you like to, what would you like to, uh, what would you like to me to link you to? There are so many of them. It's like, where do I even begin, dude? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, trust me, Sam. We're going to get to that one today for sure. <laughs> I have a, actually, Sam, I have a post called, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Secret Kings and and Little Emperors or something like that. I forget what it was, but it's very much what you're talking. It's it's a uh, compensation. Uh, if you've read the uh, my first book, I have a a chapter on there. It's called Compensation. So when a guy when we say a guy is like compensating for something, like if a guy has a giant monster truck, what's the first thing we say? Oh, he must have a little pee pee, right? Or he must be short. He must have short man's disease. Or you'll see guys who are in the gym and they are just they are ripped than you will ever be but they're five foot four or five foot six, right? Well, he must be compensating. Well, yeah, yeah, he is actually compensating for something. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with him compensating for that because at least he understands that. At least he has the, the insight to sort of figure out, you know, what, what he needs to uh, accomplish. Now, the problem is, is when you get obsessive about one side of it to the exception of everything else. So like guys like say like Bezos or, or guys who are like just obsessed about money to the exception of their physique, to the exception of their, you know, their mindset, to the exception of their game, their social skills. Like I, uh, once again, I'll, I'll be happy to say this one more time. Elon Musk is a Spurg. Okay. He is, he, he has, he has admitted to being uh, on the Asperger's spectrum. Okay. He, he knows that, at least he knows, right. At least he's, he knows about that, but he has to the exception of all other things pursued you know, the things that he likes to do. And that's, I'm not, I'm not, this is not a judgment call on Elon Musk. I'm just saying, look at what the guy does. He grosses out on one, one aspect and he breeds. That's basically what he does. He grosses out, makes a lot of money and he breeds until randomly we find out, Oh, he's got another, <laughs> he's got another baby mama. <laughs> that's all there is about the guy. So, all right. Yeah, there isn't. Uh, yeah, that's good. Um, uh, yeah, I agree with her. There's, there's nothing wrong with a man who compensates for what they uh, lack when it comes to dexterity or body. Yes, exactly. How else do you get better? How else do you go stronger? Especially if you don't know what, what you're doing in the first place. You haven't seen it in the first place. How do you know? Uh, I, I think it's much like, you know, what's funny to me is like, and then just before we jump in here, whenever I see like a fat chick running down the road like you know jogging and trying to lose weight or i see overweight women at the gym i have so much respect for them because they're there they understand that they need to be because there's like so many other chicks that are out there or who are as big or if not big or maybe even just smaller than they are 
but they don't realize that they need to get in shape or guy, you know, men and women, by the way, too. I have so much respect for a guy like Big Mo from from a uh, fresh and fit like i love that guy like a brother man he's he is like he's got the best personality he's great but the dude's like 410 pounds i, I don't even know where you're at right now <laughs> mo but i mean he let's, let's, let's be honest he's morbidly obese we got to get him thinner and he'll be a great success story once he does but i have so much more respect for him than god yeah, there he is all right all right big mo i'll give you the shout out yes big mo by the way i want you in on my my midweek uh panel show my new mutants show you're one of my new mutants um however uh, i have so much respect for for mo because he's doing it and i have respect for fat women who are in the gym and they're actually doing it because at least at some somewhere along the line they go you know what Maybe I need to put down the fork. <laughs> oh, wait, there it is. Okay, so he's down to, okay, so from five, damn man, 500 to 443. I must have met you like the, it's almost a year ago now that I met you. You must have been close to 500. That was crazy. But now you're losing it. That's good, man. It's like, it takes time. It's not, it doesn't happen overnight. You're not going to drop all that weight overnight. What's going to be weird is to see pictures of, of Mo with me, like kissing him on his bald ass head at 500 pounds. And then he's going to be down to like, you know, even just 200 pounds will be a vast difference. So anyways, what I wanted to say is that when I see that, I respect that. So it's like, Oh, you're fat. No, but there's a difference between being fat and just going, I don't care. And I'm fat and I need to get my ass in the gym that there's a qualifiable difference between those two. So when you see that, you see a guy who's compensating, oh, I'm overweight. I got to compensate somehow. How do I compensate? I get in the gym and I get better looking at it. There are so even to this day, I still see people will send me these articles on Twitter about like, and this happened during COVID, right? How, how, uh, going to the gym is like toxic math, toxic masculinity and men shouldn't be going and doing that because they're going to vote Republican and eat red meat. If they go to the gym, right? They shame you for actually wanting to get in the gym. And it's nothing new, by the way. I remember back in, um, my brother used to be an amateur circuit bodybuilder back in the early nineties, mid nineties. And, um, I used to go to his amateur. He never got his pro card, but uh, he, he was in pretty good shape. And I, I lifted. I was in, I didn't, was certainly not competition class. I was more interested in playing music and getting laid. But, uh, but we were, you know, I've been lifting for a very long time. So when you see me on Fresh and Fit and you go, oh, Swallow Tomasi. Thank you very much. No, I'm not on TRT, nor am I on trend. I just go, I, it's just a habit. It's something I like to do and I do it, right? Um, but back in the day, I can remember, I can remember, Going to the gym, like this is in the muscle, Joe Weider muscle and fitness era, right? Corey Everson and, and uh, Ron, or was it uh, Lee Haney and Dorian Yates and Ronnie Coleman, God, Ronnie Coleman, all those old, the old school bodybuilders from the night, you know, the early, late eighties, early nineties. And I can remember there were chicks who would go, why do you do that? All you do is go and lift weights and look at yourself in the mirror. How self-absorbed do you have to be? You know, they're like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm getting laid if I'm by doing it. I look better as a result of this. So, you know, you could hate all you want. I didn't care. Nobody else did either, right? But there was this kind of, there was sort of this, I don't want to say it's shaming, but it was sort of, yeah, Lou, Lou, Fer, Lou Ferrigno was like, <laughs> that was early 80s, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yes, exactly, man. I, and I know I am not on TRT and no, nor have I been, nor have I ever been like tested. I'm, I should, probably, should I get my, I should probably get my testosterone checked at some point, but you know, I still wake up with morning wood like the rest of you youngins. So I don't see any reason to do it. Um, so there's always going to be this sort of shaming. And by the way, that's the operative point here. Okay. When we talk about compensation, we talk about a guy who's got a big truck. When we talk about a guy who's jacked and juicy, we say, oh, well, he's jacked because he must have a little pee pee, right? He's jacked because he's compensating because he's got short man's just Napoleon complex, right? He's jacked or he's doing these things to compensate for something else. <laughs> you really want me to. You really want me to. I, go check out. You guys don't. Do you even do you even follow me on Instagram? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I oh, by the way, I am just uh, you know, just as a casual aside right here. I'm working with um, Derek Thomas and O'Neill Thomas, who are both, by the way, uh, bodybuilders. They're great fitness guys. They're very much a red pill. I put um, uh, I put Derek on Saucecast about uh, over a month, about a month ago, I think. Um, go check them out, Derek Thomas and O'Neill Thomas on Instagram. Uh, they are I I'm 
checking out their fitness program kind of in the same way that I was sort of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, let's see, checking out the class for um, auditing, auditing the class for uh, body language mastery. So I'm auditing the class for uh, Derek and uh, and O'Neill's fitness program right now. I'm going to do this for the next three months and I'll give you guys updates and stuff. But I'm in pretty good shape already. So I, I, I got a lot of good places to start. I've always been kind of like a hard gainer. Right. I've always had like kind of a swimmer's body. I'm never like, I'm an, is this still a thing like, like body types, like, like ectomorph, mesomorph, endomorph. Is that still a thing? Or has that been like debunked? I'm not really sure. Someone told me it was debunked. Some people said that they swear by it, but if it's real, I guess I'm an ectomorph and it's like, I can put on muscle, but it's just, it's just rough. <laughs> it's hard for me to put on. Like I have, I have a swimmer slash water polo body. I don't have a, I don't have a, a bodybuilder's body. My brother does, but. And yes, I have a younger brother, just so you guys know. Yeah, there you go. All personal stories today. Okay, let's get into this now. The Why am I saying, why am I giving you all this preface here before? Because what you're going to say right now is you're going to say, well, it's because he's jacked and he's juicy and everything. What I want you guys to do is look at the synergies between money, muscles, and game when we're looking at Andrew here. Okay, so let's get let's get started. I'm going to start with this. For, this is the intro here. He isn't real. If you know what you have, you don't have much. And once you reach a certain level of money, you don't even know what you have. And you certainly don't own what you have. Outside entities, which you may have a stake in, own what you have. People who have a lot of money understand. It's very difficult for me to even say how much money I have, but I can have anything I want, anytime I want. All right, so that's the intro right there. I want to stop right there really quickly because that what they're doing is they in, they do like quick hit interviews with them, the participants, as they're having this back and forth. And I thought that was interesting, a, a very interesting way to start this off because now we're talking about resources here. Is You need it louder? I don't know how, how else to make it louder. Uh, maybe if I muted myself, at least there's no echo, right? I'll try. I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. Hang on. Uh, however, I wanted to make sure you guys understood that when you get to a certain point, like like there's guys that I know right now, like if I, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to like, you know, <laughs> I don't mean to, to gloss somebody like say Ken McElroy or, or George Gammon, but they've got a lot of money. Robert Kiyosaki, by the way, will be on Ben Shapiro show uh, tonight. I think at eight, uh, eight Eastern. I got to make sure that I'm out of here so I can watch that. Um, but they've got a lot of money, how they came into it. You guys can, you can say, well, you know, he got it illegitimately. He's a scam artist, this blah, blah, blah. Okay. But the fact of the matter is he's still in a position right now where he, like people say, he's got a lot of money. He's got so much money. He doesn't even know what, where he, how much money he has. The fact is, is he can have what he wants when he wants it. Resource, like money's no object, right? Resources are no object. And so how does that change your mind about other aspects of those three things? Right. There's a synergy for you right there. If you have that kind of cash and you have that those kind of resources, how does that change your mind about game? How does that change your mind about your physique? How does that change your mind about other areas? That's what I'm talking about. There's there's synergies between those three so that one plays off of the other. So uh, we'll talk about confidence here in a little while, because um when I get to the Jedediah uh, video here, she's going to talk about confidence. It's like, you just got to, it's like this magical well of confidence that you just suddenly, you know, it's like this Tony Robbins, like woo woo magical bullshit, right? No confidence comes from options. And, and I would argue that, that Andrew's confidence comes from knowing that he's got options. He doesn't have to be doing this. He knows he doesn't. He could probably be having much better time with some girls getting bottle service somewhere in you know Dubai or God knows wherever else he goes. But he's doing this. He doesn't have to do this. He's just doing it because he wants to put himself out there. He doesn't need to do this. He wants to do this. And that's the difference. So let's keep going. Uh, I might scrub through this a little bit. So bear with me. Hi, I'm Sean Reynolds and I'm still on the lookout. I've had some good dates. I'm liking yeah. my views, like, do you know what I'm saying? It's all good right oh, now. Ah, charmer, isn't ya? And I've had some bad dates. How do you think you've done on the date? I don't really give a shit, I'm not gonna lie, bruv. Where are all the decent men? Not in my DMs, that's for sure. You get me, I feel like I'm rolling with the man then. What's going on? 95s! It seems like a lot of men don't know how to treat a lady. I'll just manhandle everything. You need to start putting a chest in chest and then that, like, jeez. Will I have better luck this season? What would you do if my ex was after you? He can have you. Let's find <laughs> out. This is grilling. I'm Randy Tate the third. I'm here because, uh... Um, I was invited. Is that a good answer? That's fine. Yeah, I was invited. So I thought I'd come along. Why not? There's already love in the universe. I've already found love. I found love with reality, my friend. I'm already in love. I'm in love with waking up every day. 
you know? There's people who are trying to stop me breathing and they've yet to succeed. I'm already in love, love life's great. I used to think that it was the man, and I was actually accurate, thinking that it was the man who was selling himself to the woman. But once you reach a certain level of achievement as a, as a man, it's the woman who's trying to sell herself to you. I've handled a bunch of, of difficult situations in my life. I'm, I'm not intimidated, just leave it at that. We'll see how it goes. I would say I'm pretty confident, yeah, overall. Yeah, I think uh, confidence is born from adversity, right? Everything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Can Cheyenne ask you whatever she likes? Anything she likes, find the most difficult question on the planet, tell her to throw her question card away, write a new one. I'm ready. <laughs> better be good. I better struggle, which is obviously impossible. So she should at least try to make me struggle. I spent my life fighting in the cage. I'm not, I'm not scared of her. I think relationships are a beautiful thing. I think that the synergy between men and women are a beautiful thing if they are correctly collaborated. I think that that's what makes society function. I think that's what makes the world function. I think that men and, men and women falling in love and having children and having families are very, very beautiful things as long as it's done correctly, as long as the woman obeys like she's supposed to. And uh, I think the world can be a beautiful place as long as gender roles are not misconstrued and misunderstood. So if Sean doesn't understand that, I'll correct her quickly and we'll fix the world and we can move on. All right, let's halt right there really quick I, before he jumps in. Now, what did he just do? What did he just do, class? Wait, wait, let me get my class. Yeah. Hello there, Jim. All right, class is in session. Going? What did he just do? All that was cocky and funny for sure. Um, but he is, he, everybody, he's, he's pre-establishing himself as this guy who's very full of himself, right? So from the outset, I don't know if he's doing this on purpose, whatever. He is already pre-establishing himself as being high value, he, about high value, what alpha, whatever you want to say. Okay. But the fact is, is like, he's the kind of guy where he's establishing himself as a kind of guy who has options. He doesn't need to be doing this. There's other chicks he could be with. And that's really what he's saying. Like, hey, look, if you don't work out and he's making it up front and he's very overt about it. And women hate that. They hate it when a guy is uh, overt about their options and about their confidence. Right. It's one thing if the guy's a little bit cocky, but he's already pre-establishing himself for a uh, for an audience that is already just raring to go. They want to see him fail. They want to see him fall down. One of the reasons why you get like um like that. Remember that show Cheaters? Or you get like these confessions from these guys who are like confessions of a bad boy. And can somebody find this out for me, uh, Sam, if you can? How old is Sean? How old is this chick? Oh, by the way, hoop earrings, duly noted. Thank you very much. Ding. Um, and a cocktail dress. Ding. She's ovulating, right? Um, she's looking for, I'm looking for the, the, the right guy. Now, sh this program right here is exactly what the modern woman wants. It's this. Let's bring them through. This right here is a better format, I think, to scratch the uh, the indignation. She's 33, single mother at 33. Good luck, baby. <laughs> you're already out of this thing. You're already out of the marketplace. Um, so single mother, 33 years old. Thank you very much for that. Um, who gave me that? You get uh, you get here. You get one of those. Thank you for finding that out for me. And a single mother as well. Oh boy. Okay, so, but going back to, he's pre-establishing this and they want, and probably they want him to do this. Like he's cocky. He's, he seems arrogant. He seems full of himself. And so he's already the kind of guy that we want to see fail. We want to see, we want to see her give him his comeuppance. We want to see her win because he's the kind of guy who thinks he can have any girl, but she's not any girl. He can't just have her. Well, we'll, we'll find out about that but we're already pre-establishing that narrative that's already here. He's a guy who is like, he's the kind of guy your mom warned you about, right? He's the kind of guy who, who gets away with whatever he wants to because he's sexy and he's rich and blah, 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 blah. Well, we need to find out this how it is. Big Mo. <laughs> yeah, you're out of here. Say my name. <laughs> I need that one. You're out. <laughs> I need that sound drop. Tell, tell Chris to give me that sound drop. But we've already pre-established this. They do this, by the way, with various contestants on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Okay, so for the men, like the man might be uh, even the, if it's even if it's The Bachelor, it's still the guy is okay. Is he full of himself? Is he a, kind of a selfish prick? Or is uh, like when it's The Bachelorette, it's all these other guys, right? And so, which one is Andrew of the lineup of the original guys before, like on the season, like episode one of season twenty-six or twenty-eight, whatever it is? This right here, I would say, is probably a more satisfying, gratifying um, format for, for young women today.
And so he's about to give this, but remember the reason why he has to sort of give this build up in this pre-established kind of thing is because this is the guy that we want to see. For. We want to see him, him lose. We want to see him get torn down. He's not, but he, we, you're going to want to see him this happen. Now, why is that? The reason for that? Okay. Here's your game analysis for this. Why is it that we want to see this guy fail? Why is it that we have an alpha male for whom we want to bring down? Why from women and women at large, of course, but like, cause we want to say, we want to say women want to see a guy like Andrew Tate fail because they, they, it's very satisfying for women sort of like hind brain or their, their feminine intuition to figure him out, to say, ah, ha, he's not really the guy that, that, that he says he is ha. That's why this whole show is so satisfying because the whole show for women is trying to figure out if the guy's for real. Is Andrew Tate for real? Is he really like this? Does he have all this? Or is he going to knuckle under and is he going to like, is he going to concede a point or whatever else? And if that's the case, then can we, can we find some way to figure out whether he's actually, he's actually a beta and he's not actually an alpha. And that's really the whole, like you're on, you know, pins and needles, right? You're on you're walking on eggshells because you want to find out whether or not Andrew is the real deal. That's why women, that's why the bachelorette is such a big deal, right? Well, which one's for real? And which one's not? You want to know why shit tests are an innate part of women's psyches? That's why. To figure out whether or not he's the real deal. There's nothing that is, I'm quoting my own book, sorry, you can do that after five books. Quoting my own book here, you can, <laughs> there's nothing that is more self-satisfying for a woman than to figure out or than think that she's figured out you out using her intuition, using that, that feminine intuition, hmm, Hmm. Is she really the real deal? Like that, like they have some magical force ability to figure figure you out, right? That plays into your game, which he's going to use here a little bit later on, which is freaking brilliant. However, when if you can use that, if you can use that innate desire to try to figure you out, your game will be that much stronger. And he's gonna he'll prove that point here in a little while. But I wanted to pre-establish that because it's also what I wrote about. In my first book, there's a chapter in there called The Threat. And there is, and I'll just, again, quoting myself, um, there is nothing that is more that is simultaneously, there's nothing more simultaneously um, threatening, yet arousing and attractive than a man who understands his own value to women and is willing to put it out there on the table, right? Is willing to talk about it, is willing to say, you know what? You know, I, I'm, I'm here. I, I like you. I, I'm, I'm happy to like, you know, entertain you for a little while. But if this doesn't work out, I already know I've got, you know, six other girls on speed dial right now or whatever, like in my, in my, in my roster, right? I'm spinning plates. Whether that is overt or that is covert is immaterial to, to what, when you're talking, when you're, when you're running game, people say, well, what's the difference between direct game and indirect game? I'll get to that today too. However, this is very much direct game in that he's already pre-established what his character and what his uh, his own value is. And we say, well, he's cocky. We want to see him be taken down. Women do because they don't think he's the real deal. Men do. Beta males do because they want to form a coalition to tear down an alpha male. That's why this is satisfying to more feminized blue pill guys. Watch how he walks in. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. That's really nice. Thank you. Let's do two, two kisses. One, two. Oh, very, very nice to meet you. What's very your name? nice to meet you. Andrew Tate, what's your name? Andrew, nice to meet you. Um, Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Or Cheyenne Reynolds, if you're doing this house. Cheyenne Reynolds. We're yeah. going to do official. Yeah. Okay, nice Reynolds. to meet you. Cheers. I think she's an uh, attractive woman. She's good looking. Friendly demeanor. Um, I can tell she thinks she knows things. So I look forward to correcting her, <laughs> but that's usually how life works. Finally, see, a man that makes an effort. How are you? I'm good. Okay. Finally, a man who makes an effort. Now, did you see how he walked in there? I don't, I have not seen, I've only seen, well, I shouldn't say that. I've seen two other uh, of these quote unquote dates here. Okay. None of them start with Kino. That's exactly what he just did. Kiss on the cheek, kiss on the cheek, touches her on the shoulder. He's confident enough that he's not worried about like this girl, like losing her shit on him or anything like that. Okay. You can say, well, they're on a show together, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You could make that argument. However, this is about technique. This is not about like whether it's set up or it's not set up. He starts with the, with the, uh, technically what is what we would call Kino. So kinesthetics, he's already starting with touch 
And he's already in a position right now where he is, uh, let's just say, in a dominant position. He's not. He's begun the conversation without even having, even starting the conversation. He's already in his own frame. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where are you from? I'm American, but I lived in England for a long time. I lived in a very prestigious part of the UK. I don't know if you've ever heard of Luton. Very prestigious. prestigious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, number one. Luton, okay. <laughs> was not expecting that. So I was in Luton for a while and now I live in Europe. So I've oh, just wow. come in, yeah. Okay, because your accent, it's like really different, isn't it? It's pretty mixed up. I'm like a street dog, my dear. I've been here, I've been there. Half American, half English, half Luton, half everything else. A bit so. of a mix. A bit of a mix. That's cool. Yeah. So how did you get here today? Uh, I flew in. I flew in this morning. Yeah. Flew in. It's different. It's like different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump okay. on the jet. You flew in on a jet? Who is this guy? What about you? You have a mix, no? Yeah. Uh, my family were Caribbean and English. So the Caribbean side is the, the crazy side? Or, nice. the or the English side is the crazy side? Um, I'd say the Caribbean is the fun side. The fun you know, a bit side? Of spies. So you're fun and crazy? Not crazy. I mean, it's the beginning of the day. You can't lie. Do I look like I'd lie to you? <laughs> yes. Okay. So now what has he done here? Did you guys catch this? This is a compliance test is what this is. Okay. So what he's doing, he's, he's testing to see whether or not she's going to fall into his frame. She's not because she's the host. Okay. She kind of can't do it because she's got to carry the whole thing. But from what I have seen, at least in the two other interviews that I watched, like nobody else establishes this kind of frame. She's already established frame. And even the whole thing about Lutton and all that other stuff, uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, okay, who cares, right? But it's the it's the way he's delivering it. Like if I say I'm for, I'm originally from Pasadena, California, right? Like that's like who cares, right? But if I go, but I'm from I am from Pasadena, California, right? If I go and I say something like that, then then if I it depends on the delivery of how I am actually delivering that information, right? So there's a confident way to go and do these things. And there's sort of this like, oh, I'm from this, you know, from Lutton, sorry, you know, but don't apologize for yourself. A lot of guys will start off by self-deprecating because they think that that is endearing. It is not endearing. Women want that challenge. He's already a challenge from the word go at this point. You'll also notice that he seems kind of arrogant. And that's what really rubs like when I was just watching the um, I was watching the Twitter feed when I put the uh, the announcement for this show up and everybody's like, well, I don't really like this guy. Was it? Uh, where is this? Uh, I got this guy from. I'll just read it out here. This guy is called Labor Patriot. He says, take take note that Andrew Tate, despite all the bravado, clearly has no children, much like a lot of pickup artists of the 2000s. The survival and replication and conquering jargon is a way to glamorize and justify plain pursuit of pleasure for its own sake right so this is i don't say he's a hater but the guy is definitely trying to disqualify that they see something like a guy like that this labor patriot guy sees something like this and he's like he's like well that's disqualification you want to talk about like when we talk about like how men and women fight like intrasexually competent uh, compete with one another women fight in the psychological men tend to fight in the physical now we can't always be beating the shit out of each other to like prove that we're amogging such such and such but there's also the way of saying well disqualification is a way to uh eliminate a comp a competitor from the sexual marketplace so for instance if there's a very good looking guy like henry cavill walks in the mood in, in the room right he's how tall is he? Six foot four, right? He's good looking, has a jawline. He's freaking Superman, okay? Walks into the room. A guy that looks like that, guys will be like, man, well, he's probably gay, right? That, that probably gay part is disqualification. Women do this all the time, and more feminized, blue pill, beta male men do the, exactly the same thing. They fight with the same techniques that women do. Oh, he's probably gay, right? It's, it's this disqualification thing rather than saying, yeah, he's got his shit together. You know, I got my shit together too. Like rather than trying to meet head on, it's always well, sniping, but it's, it's like a disqualification tactic. And so what's happening right here is he's already building himself up to being somebody that you're not going to like, and you really want to watch him fall down. I'm not a liar, actually. I'm you're not a liar. Everything you tell me for the rest of this episode is going to be a complete truth. Yeah. Promise me. Yeah. Say, I promise. I promise. No, I really promise. Compliance test right there. Bam. Say, I promise, say you'll say the truth every, for the rest of this date. Comply, man, that is like, you want you guys want examples? Oh, Rolo, give me an, what are, how does shit testing work? How does compliance test work? How does frame work? Here it is, children. Well, you know, Hello there, Red Pill 101 right here. That was a compliance test. Did you guys catch that? For the rest of this show, you promised to tell me the truth. Got it? We'll see. 
or honest faults and opinions. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right, all right, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, so what do you do? Let me think of a lie. Give me a second. No, you can't lie. You, you have to tell the truth. I don't have to tell the truth. Why? This, we already agreed you're telling the truth. There's only one of us can tell the truth. One of us can lie. That's not good stuff. I'm a shoe salesman. Okay. That right there, full on compliance test and meant to provoke. Meant to pick that up. Do you guys get that? That's the that's the follow up to that, by the way. So you have to tell the truth, but I can lie. If you could, if you could establish that, and she's already playing with him like a like she's the bratty sister, and he's the older brother right now. They're, he's already establishing this before you like you're, like we're not even like ten minutes in right now. <laughs> I sell shoes, socks, shoe accessories, polish, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah, I sell shoes. Yeah. You good at? I'm doing all right. Yeah, I'm surviving. I sold two pairs of shoes yesterday. Okay, what did he just do there, children? I just I sell shoes. Come on now, right? Do we we know he doesn't sell shoes? Okay. By the way, old school pickup artist one hundred and one. Okay, this, this was what do you do for a living? I'm a what is it a uh, a disposable lighter repairman. Remember that from the game? That's just twenty twenty two. That he's all he's doing is agreeing and amplifying what he's doing. Like remember when I say play with her and play with her this is that this is that interplay going on right now do you understand do you get this as we're going along here you don't need gurus you don't need to go do infields you watch this right here i've been doing this for 20 plus years this is how i got this is how i write my stuff this is how i get in, get into the game this is how this is exactly what i've been doing at you know gorillas in the mist you know watching the humans this is exactly what i've been doing for years right now and I watch this and I see this and I go, yep, that's that's uh, cocky and funny. That is agreeing. He just did agree and amplify. Well, you're a shoe salesman. That is she knows he's not a, a shoe salesman. You know, he's not a shoe salesman. He knows he's not a shoe salesman, but they go along with it. He doesn't break character. Do you see what's happening? Play with her and play with her. That's why. Got it. Good. Let's move on. That's good. OK, that's good. He's a liar. So tell me a bit about you. Andrew. I'm not comfortable opening up too much. Oh, really? Yeah, because you know, you might work for John Law and the government. No. I have to be careful what I say. Oh, so it's not commitment issues. It's not, no, it's not commitment issues. It's sure? more just like legality issues. Oh, okay. I like to go to church. I'm a man of God, I scrabble. Do you have faith? <laughs> okay, so this is, you have to earn my truth. I'm going to lie to like he just said he did. He's doing everything he said he was going to do. He's lying. Right. But she's going along with it and she's smiling and she's loving every friggin' minute of this. That's why. Okay. Remember, this isn't scripted. This isn't like, oh, he had to memorize any of this, any of these lines. Right. It's good looking dude. He's going to, uh, I will, I will give uh, Tate uh, uh, points for when you're going to see him sort of like elevate emotion and then de and decline emotion. You'll see how that that happens here later on. Okay. This is good. This is an interesting conversation that we can have on, yeah. on camera, which is, which is. I'd say, I'd say my personal journey with God is between me and God. So I'm not one of those people that like, is like, yes, I go to church or yes, I do this. Um, Don't you think that's a bit like lazy Christianity? Not I love this. Okay, so now it's judgment. Now he's judge, judging her, but not judging her so much, but like he's analyzing her. So now he's the one that's in control. Like he's doing the interviewing right now, really. And so he's sort of shit. Like you see, did you see this, the script change here? Especially when he starts talking about God, because she takes it seriously and he doesn't. No, not really, because for me, I believe in love and I believe in faith and I don't think it's just one religion that you need to follow you know i've got friends that are muslim I agree. i've got friends that are christian you know i've got friends that are spiritual so i don't put myself in one category i understand and i respect that completely but don't you think out of respect for god himself whether you're in dubai and you go to the mosque or you're in england and you go to the church you should get up early on a sunday despite all the booze and get up and take an hour out of your life and just show some respect don't no you agree? because everyone's journey is with god is personal you can be a lazy spiritualist, a lazy Christian. You can be a lazy kickboxer, right? I'm a kickboxer, but I don't train. Okay, bro. <laughs> You're lazy. It's okay. All right. What's funny about this whole thing is like you know damn well what's coming out of his mouth is like he's not. Tr he's trying to push the conversation along, but they want to take him literally. They want to take him like, oh, is he, he's he's really this way. This is what he's really about. Well, the fact that you can't tell is the game i'm sorry about the quietness of this i i really don't know how else to blo to, to boost this up as any any more than it is i'll see what i can do on the board hang on i'm not lazy 
you have time for God? Absolutely. That's good. Do you get up early on a Sunday? Completely. That's good. Every single Sunday, of course. That's amazing. And I think that being religious is a beautiful thing, and I think that a lot of people try and say they're spiritual or they're religious in a way, copping out on the one hour a week, it just feels a bit lazy to me. I think you can always find an hour a week. Yeah, no, you definitely could. So maybe God sent me here to make you go to church. Maybe, maybe you're here to enlighten me. Maybe that's why, yeah. Yeah, there it is, I'm God. You guys pick up on that, I'm God. <laughs> She's already qualifying to him. He's not qualifying to her. He's not trying to get into her. He's the, the, the litmus test is with him, not with her. Okay, you can hear it. Uh, it's fine. I can hear it. Uh, you child. Okay, sorry. Anyways, the uh, the the point of the the, the 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 whole thing is this: is that he has just flipped the script on her, so that he's the one. Now, this is like perfect frame control, absolutely per like flawless frame control. Now you're gonna say this. You're gonna say, okay, well, he's got a lot of money. He's good looking. He has to take his glasses off once, right? Uh, he's definitely dressed like women, by the way, women understand the minute you walk into a, a room, they know what you're, they know how much your whole outfit costs. Okay. And I don't care if you're in the Midwest and you bought your outfit from Walmart, those women know how expensive the clothes are that you are wearing at that particular time. Okay. Women are very, uh, even the girl from freaking rural Butte, Montana, well, Butte, Montana, rural Midwest knows, knows fashion well enough. And certainly this girl does here too. Okay. 33 years old, single mother. She sees this guy walk in. She's looking for the bigger and better deal, especially women who are incentivized, right? She's already past the epiphany phase. She's already encumbered by a, uh, by a child at this point. Now, is she really realistically looking for a guy on this show? No. You know why? Because the moment she finds a guy, the show's over. That's why there's no way she's going to find the right guy. She's going to sit there and complain about the whole thing. But in the meantime, we're going to have some pretty interesting conversations about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what kind of man are you? What's the spectrum? I need you to quantify it for me. Who's at the bottom and who's at the top? For me, I'd just say top, like a high value man. What would you say constitutes a high value man? A high value man is someone that is successful okay. financially. Okay. I'd say it's someone that's got a lot of integrity okay. and good morals, yeah. that is very well respected, is very sure of himself, but also is a very family-orientated man. That's from me, a high-value man. Okay. Okay. So what that's what's I've done there is that she is trying to find a way to qualify or quantify him. Now, clearly she's like, she's just, I mean, maybe this is just one of her interview questions. Who knows? Um, did you have that? What did you say? Uh, role of default audio is just so high up that any other sources of audio is just, oh so, uh, yeah, it's probably me myself here. That's why. Like if I talk down here, you probably would say, because this is like the mid range right here. That's why I've got myself boosted up. You know, I'll try to keep myself down a little bit. Maybe that'll regulate. Anyways, getting back to this, the, um, the idea here is that she's trying to say, okay, I want, I want you to qualify to me. That was what the question's about. Are you a high value man? Okay. He uh, brilliantly, well, what makes a high value man? Do I have that? Do I have that? Do I have that? Do I have integrity? Do I have money? Do I have this? Yes, yes, yes. And yes. Now, the problem with the question, what is a high value man, is you're only going to get one side of hypergamy answering. All right. So you're only going to ever have, um, it's only going to ever be about what makes a man attractive. Now, high value man is not just about like your money and your integrity and all this esoteric, you know, values and bullshit. Okay. Because what that is, is that's, this is what I need for the long term. It's not, you got to be hot. You got to be jacked and juicy as fuck, right? You got you to be, you know, in the game. Thanks for that, Atham. I'm much appreciated. I wish I could put stickers on. Um, but she's not going to say, what do I find arousing? She's going to find out what is attractive in what makes, that's, a, I always say this, I've said this to Fresh on several times. And if I had a problem with, uh, with anything, slightly anything with what Kevin Samuels used to talk about when we're talking about, High value men, it's always rooted in the three P's protection, provisioning, and parental investment. It's always on the beta buck side of hypergamy. It's never like, okay, the guy has to be jacked. He's got to have 26 inch guns. He's got to be freaking, I know that's big. He's got he's got to be like six feet tall. Um, I mean, we can look at the the, the physical factors because remember, synergies, one more time, 
So you're, she's not saying, what do I really want in a guy who's like, just really going to like bang the hell out of me. I'm not the guy I want on Friday night. What do I want for the long term? So when you get that question, he, uh, he brilliantly again says, okay, well, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think qualifies as a high value man. Essentially what he's done, he's taken that question, turned it back around on her. So she's the one that has to sort of give him the criteria that he already meets and he's just going to, you know, sort of rattle off why he does. It's very easy for him because this is now, by the way, this might seem like a shit test to you. Well, are you a high value man? Well, what's a high value man? Now, when I tell you, and there's other shit tests that are going to happen in this as well. Okay. So here's what happens is when that woman gives you a shit test, he, what you as a guy have to do is you have to be able to take that. And it's like, uh, what I call in, and it's in book five. This is in my, my, uh, my player's handbook. Okay. In book five, I say this, it's like a uh, game jujitsu. You use your opponent's energy, their strength, their momentum, their delivery, and you use it against them. You let them, you let them follow through and then you push them to the side or you redirect that energy back upon them. It's like fencing, you know, thrust, parry, repost. You're the one doing the parry and the repost. And that's playing the game. Play with her and play with her. And that's exactly what he's done up to this point. I'm high value man. He's very sure of himself. Yeah, so what's a high value man for you? Pretty much basically what you said. I think a high value man is a capable man. I think capability can be judged in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And capability is something which varies depending on the situation. You need a man who is capable of doing lots of different things that he doesn't do very often. You need a man who's capable of being violent when the time appears. Mm -hmm. Of course, you need a man who's capable of making money. You need a man who can kill somebody and hold a baby in the same day. You need a man with a very broad spectrum of qualities and assets and capabilities. And this is actually what the most difficult thing about being a man is. Most people, when I say most people, let me change that. Most females don't respect how difficult it is to become a high value man. Because to become a high value man, you need to have so many different qualities and so many different capabilities. It's a very difficult thing to do. You need to be funny and smart and charismatic and interesting with stories and, and strong. And, and rich with a nice car and a nice apartment. Whereas to be a high value female, you need to be hot. Yeah, that's the jump cut right there. Now he's going to turn it around. That right there was enough of a turnaround that he could have stopped right there. Remember what I said, game jujitsu, game judo, right? Game jujitsu, right? You take your opponent's energy and you use it against your opponent. This is what he could have stopped right there. Now he's going to go on and talk about, well, what makes a high value woman is she's got to be hot. She's got to be available, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So he's going to, this is the, this is like the, the, the finishing move, right? I mean, this is where, where he has taken her question, her shit test question, shown that he knows how to play it, turn it back around on her. And actually he's going to go and amplify it with the rest of this. If you're nice, it's a bonus, but it's not even that necessary. That's it. If you're a pretty female, even if you're a piece of shit person, you're going to get messages on Instagram. Yeah. Whereas if you're a good looking man who lives with his mother, you ain't getting any messages. And okay. That was the finishing move for the question of, are you a high value man? Okay. So now it's like, yes, I am. And this is what I think a high value woman is. Now it's her turn to parry and repost. Not really. I, I think so. I think that if you're a good looking man, that's all you have going for you. I don't think you're going to succeed very well in life. Yeah. I know there's very, very. And there you have it, my friends. If you're just a good looking guy, you're not going to succeed in life. Understand that's why we said game trumps looks. Okay. Remember game affluence and looks have two, three is best, but if you can only have one game is the most important of those congruence, social skills, social intelligence will take you way further than your looks and way further than your money. You have to be, if you're a good bullshit artist, if you understand human nature, it's going to take you way, you, you can get to money with that, with that game. And I'm not just talking about with women here. Okay. Social intelligence, social skills, and not just the ones that you learned in high school, not the ones that you learned playing video games with your friends. What I'm talking about is real understandings of social dynamics to use the term social dynamics, but understanding the, the, the interaction, interpersonal communications, right?
That's where this comes from. Now, does that mean that looks are not important? No, absolutely not. In fact, in most cases, they're the most important thing because it gets you in the door so that you can actually show that you're congruent and that you actually have social skills understood. But once you get to that point, it's up to you. You want to know why, like, uh, was it well, guys will say all the time, like, well, I got a, I got a date and it was great, uh, blah, 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 but I fucked it up. Right. Well, you're a good looking guy. How did you, you screw it up? Well, most of the times like when women sell themselves on you and you, it takes a minimum of game to like get her into bed, the only thing you have to do is like not trip on your own dick. And most guys do, right? They're like, they fucked it up. They'll fuck it up somehow. And they do so because they lack those social skills. They lack game or they lack a formalized version of game. We'll talk about that here in a bit. But I wanted to point that I want to stop the whole thing right there and show you exactly what he's talking about, because here we have synergies. Once again, looks like what did he just talk about? He's like, I'm a man of God. I got this. I got that. He's like, those are all synergies that create the at least the perception of the total package. Pretty girls who have nothing else going for them that manage to do very, very well. Yeah. Do you play chess? I'm OK. At it. But if you look at the chess board, right, the queen gets to jump all over the board and the king has to move one square at a time. And I think that's done very purposefully. If you go to Monaco and you see a yacht and you see a man on that yacht, he had to work his entire life and network his entire life and get up early and deal with stress and tax problems and police problems and work his ass off to buy that boat. What did the girl have to do? The girl was on that boat, the 19-year-old Ukrainian. She had to get a message on Instagram. Boom. So the man moves one square at a time and the queen just jumps on board. This is the point. Female beauty is extremely valuable. The thing is there's a difference between a high-value man and a high-value woman. For me, a high-value woman is what kind of mother is she? What kind of like compassion has she got? You Correct. know, has she got integrity? Has Correct. she got morals? Is she loyal? Like, all agree. these other qualities, but I feel like men base it on like just an aesthetic level. I agree with you. If okay, so they're gonna have this back and forth. This is actually a, good, a better part of the conversation. I like what he has to say about this, but I think what happens is she's trying to qualify what ought to be universally considered high value for women based on a male or based on a, uh, like what women find attractive in a man. Okay. What, what they, this is like understanding a high value woman from her perspective is what she hopes that men will appreciate in, in women in general. Okay. So it's like, well, what did she just say a minute ago? Well, she wants a guy who's, you know, uh, has integrity, has this, whatever. Now, Andrew, to his credit, comes in, you know, comes in and says, you know, he's got to have a capacity for violence, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, no, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make this announcement at the end. Thanks, Dan. Um, but what she's, good, what she's doing here is she's trying to parry and repost with what she hopes that he will appreciate as being high value. If I meet a female, I would like her to be all those things, especially loyal. It's the most important thing for a female to be. Are you but loyal? Mr. Loyal, man of God, we already talked about church. But, but cocky, funny, agree and amplify. But the point is that to initially attract a mate, females, the most important thing for them is their looks. Whereas a man, I think, is his status. And status is a far more varied spectrum than looks alone. Being good looking alone does not make you a high status male. To be a high status male, you need to have a bunch of things. Initially, if you're catch that, catch that looks maxers, catch that blue pill doomers, black pill doomers, catch that. There's synergies. It's not just one thing. I, I laugh when I see these guys, like, even to this day, it's like guys talking about, well, you know, my, my facial structure and architecture is not symmetrical, and therefore I'm going to go off to get facial reconstructive surgery. I talked about this, by the way, with Dr. Oz, because Dr. Oz is a cosmetic surgeon. And it's, it's, it's tragic that this is like where guys' headspace is at, right? Rather than thinking, okay, get in the gym, lose weight. That might be the that might be a better starting point for you. But the synergies between money, muscles, and game is really what's going to be your core strengths right there. That's why whenever guys tell me, oh, Rolo, don't chase women, chase excellence. Okay, well, great. Do that. But what is excellence? Like he's just saying a second, what is excellence? What's a high value guy? What makes you excellent? What is your, oh, making a lot of money. Just take it, just do that. And then women will come. Well, yeah, but then you'll be one-sided. You'll be lopsided. It's like, it's like you're going to work out one bicep <laughs> and that's it, right? Just like, okay, I'm going to just stick with my, my looks. It's like guys who are very, very good looking and they lack social skills and they have no money. Okay. Well, you're a good looking guy, but yeah, you, know, you can probably still get laid now and then. No, nope, no problem. But long-term you got nothing.
You got to know, especially if you've got like a beta male out, out of outlook on life. That's why I keep saying you need to, you need to focus on all three. It's not about chasing. And whenever somebody says, Oh, you're chasing women. Well, it's not about chasing. It's about including women in that, in that trifecta, right? It's about putting it all into synerg synergistic motion, right? In, into putting it together all at the same time. Now, do you want to focus on your business? Yeah. If that's, especially if that's the weakest part of that triumvirate. Yeah. Then definitely if you're fat, which is what most guys are, that's why we tell you get your fat ass in the gym. And that's where looks maxers are right. Get in the gym. I, will, I, I, to this day, I just do not understand why all these guys who are quote unquote looks maxers or chin cells or black pill doomers or whatever. I don't understand why you haven't like converted yourself into like the most successful personal trainer on planet earth by now, because if that's your point, you ought to be making a ton of money in the gym. <laughs> like why, why would you not convert yourself into that? Well, because your mindset screwed. That's why. Just pretty, you're going to get attention. Whereas a man, you need to have a bunch of things to just get attention. Do you understand? Do you agree with my point? Mm, not always. Listen, there's men that are funny, that aren't that attractive, that can get attention. It's like an energy thing. I disagree. You disagree? I disagree. I know. I know. If that were the case, then guys like uh, Danny DeVito and let's see, who's a fat, who's a fat comedian these days? <laughs> like John Belushi. Um, like John Candy. Those guys should have been swimming in top shelf. But Louis Anderson, they should be swimming in top shelf pussy. If that was the case, you would think that if it was just about humor, if that's all, oh, it's okay. I've seen guys who are very funny and very personality and they're very attractive, blah, blah, blah. Attractive. They are not arousing. Different. Way, way different. You're saying they can get attention, but I don't think anyone would look at a funny guy. Jonah like Hill, yes. Male. Whereas if you get a really, really beautiful girl, even if she has nothing else going for her, she'd be considered high value. I wouldn't I, say high value, no. Yeah, we can disagree. That's fine. Are you a good partner? The best. What makes you see what he did there? Dropping that in. We can disagree. That's fine. You can you can you can push back against me because that means I don't have to win and you can keep playing with me. Got it? Let's not let see the, here's a, here's what guys get get hung up on, particularly guys with a literalist mindset. Oh, I wouldn't want to mess with any of this stuff. I would never bother with, with any of this game. I would just tell, hey bitch, are you DTF? Really? Okay, so am I. Like that's here's the thing. Now, I'm going to get to the point here just really quickly here because I, I got to insert this now. Why bother with any of this? Why bother going on here? He can go get late. He doesn't have to go on this show. He doesn't have to play the game. He doesn't have to be a game player. He doesn't have to even be a player, right? He's got more money than God. He's, he's got you know private jets. He's got girls doing whatever for him back home. He doesn't have to do any of this. Why doesn't he not just waltz onto the stage and go, you know what? You and you out. But why does that not work? And I will tell you why that doesn't work is because that's not what direct game is. I'm sorry, whatever you want to talk about, direct game versus versus, you know, uh, indirect game. This is indirect game. This is these are social skills. One of the reasons why di or direct game is so popular is because most guys don't have the patience or the skill to learn real game, any kind of formal indirect game, even though they would probably get with girls that they could have got had they gone indirect rather than going direct. Now, a lot of guys will be very uh, sketchy about like direct game. They'll be like, well, you know, I don't want to get a, a, an NSA, uh, you know, a harassment charge. I don't want to get, you know, EPAR, EPAR charged, whatever, because I was, I was too blunt and I was too direct. That's not it. Like, yeah, duh, that's the no brainer, right? That's the literalist. Well, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't open her at all. She's 33. She's a roasty, right? That's, that's a cope. That's that's a cop out right there. But that's definitely that's not direct game and that's not indirect game. That's just a that's just cope right there. So what is it about direct game? Now direct game is a um, direct game came from indirect game. Now people don't understand. I wrote about this in book five, by the way. This is the history of direct game versus indirect game. Now direct game was inspired originally by guys who were like in the uh, in the game sphere, like in the seduction communities, by right. And they're like, you know what? I'm wasting my time gaming these girls who are already like they're buying temperatures up anyway. So why am I like, you know, wasting my time with these girls? I'm just going to be straight up blunt and, and, and direct with them. And what they didn't what they didn't account for was all the warm up to get to the point where they could be direct. And so they just sort of waltz in there and go, you know, Dan Bilzerian has like, to get with his chicks. He doesn't have to worry about it. Tate could go direct. 
Tate could do, you know, like I'm trying to think of like guys who are high, like high value guys who are so high value that they're like any kind of like a formal game, like any kind of indirect game is kind of meaningless to them. And they don't as as a result, their game is direct game, but they don't realize that that's what they're doing. Right. They're just they're just themselves like, well, chicks on one. <laughs> Henry Cavill has no no earthly idea what game is or doesn't have to have to know what it, or, you know what, what game is because he walks into a room and he knows that the women in there want to have sex with him. Got it. Got it. OK, so as far as direct game versus indirect game is concerned, the guys who came up with, quote unquote, direct game, even where the the, the uh, excuse me, the title of it came from was guys who are already doing indirect game who go, you know what? I know enough about this game stuff now that I can like use it directly and just not waste time and move on with a sort of a, uh, a warm buyer. It's not a cold call anymore at that point. And so it's not just about like, Oh, I just want to, I don't want to waste my time in, in a sense. You know, you don't want to waste time. I get it. You don't want to make play games with girls, or whatever understood. But what happens is most guys take that and they throw it. Let's say uh, direct direct only works when she gives you the vibes from the Yeah, exactly. Funny you should say that because a lot of the guys who were proponents of formal indirect game would have agreed with you 100%, right? Straight facts, but it's uh, best to just play with her. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's the thing, Sancho. Here's here's a that's man, that's such a good comment here. Yeah, I'll give you one of these. That's such a good comment because the the thing is it's like there still has to be that initial arousal there has to be that attraction between you know the, the physical attraction between you and that girl before you can even consider direct indirect game now i've i when i was doing the the build up and i was doing the research and the work for book 5 when i was talking about the section on direct versus indirect game what i was getting into was the history of it it was the history of the direct game versus indirect game i wasn't like saying one's better than the other in fact both one might be more effective in different situations than the other one would be. However, and this is like, I'm, I was directly quoting mystery when I said this, I said the things that like the girls that would, that you lose through direct game, you could have more easily gotten had you used indirect game because you gave her, you gave her a creepy, creepy vibe. Oh, he was creepy because he just said, Hey, are you down to fuck? Right. That, might creep a girl out. Whereas if you come in and you're doing like for right now, like Tate right here doing this, this is a good example of indirect game, right? This is formal game. Play with her and play with her. Sometimes the girls you would have lost through direct game, you would have gotten had you used indirect game and vice versa. Now, I'm going to give you one more thing to think about before I start here, before I restart this one more time. There, there are two ways to win a war, okay? There's two ways to get a victory, okay? One is through attrition and the other is through strategy, okay? Attrition is throw bodies against it and, and just by sheer force, just mow over the enemy, mow over your obstacles, mow over your opposition, throw bodies at it until you win. That's attrition. That is direct game. Indirect game is strategy, learning to maneuver, learning to hit the flanks, learning to come around, learning to know where your weaknesses are, where your enemy's weaknesses are, learning to where you're playing to your strengths, knowing where the terrain is. And most guys do not have a mind for strategy. They don't play strategy games. You know what they play? They play first person shooters. They don't have strategy. They don't think about things. I, I love strategy games. And here we have a guy whose father was a chess freaking champion and he plays chess as well. I would, and you know what I'm going to do is the next time I meet him, the next time I'm with Tate, I'm going to say, let's play some chess. Let's do it. Cause I'm a strategic thinker and he's a very much a strategic, strategic thinker. I love, I like real time strategy games. I always have, and I always will. I don't play first person shooters mostly because I, I get like seasick. I get queasy when I do that, but, but I'm more of a, a strategic minded guy. Like I play, you guys know this. I've said this a million times. I play Warhammer. I play, I, that's not just the only, by the way, that's not the only game I play. <laughs> I do play historical war games as well. I have been doing it for a long time, but um, I, I like that strategy. I like maneuver. And that's why indirect game, I think, appeals to me. It's not about attrition. It's not about running a horde army, right? It's not about like throwing bodies against the wall. And so that's the difference. And I'm not saying one's better because sometimes attrition is necessary, Sometimes that's what you to win a war. That's the only the only feasible way to do it. Or maybe it just seems like it's such a it's like a gimme, right? Oh, I throw enough bodies against this, I'll, I'll win. Those are the two different mindsets. And I would argue that direct game is really kind of equitable with a war of attrition, whereas indirect game is really more about strategy, technique, flanking, you know, 
understanding, like understanding things, understanding yourself, understanding your enemy, right? And, and I'm not saying she's the enemy. I'm just saying like your opponent, you are, you're, um, whoever it is that you are, <laughs> you're playing with, I guess. So that, I, and as I said, that was the whole thing about direct versus indirect game. When you read the book, you will understand what I'm talking about. I, I'm trying to clarify this a little bit more because I had a lot of people coming at me going, oh, you're coming after Alan Roger Curry, blah, 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 mode one. No, that's not what I'm talking about. What not what not one thing I'm talking about guys who are in the seduction community during 2002, 2001, 2004, five, and that's the difference. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying they're both they're both you know tools as a means to an end. Here we have Andrew Tate using in, indirect well indirect game because he's a strategic thinker. That's why. See the best besides you and the police. I don't often answer questions. Okay. He's definitely had a police interview in the past. I don't like to answer open-ended questions because I feel like they're a trap. Why? Because when you speak a lot, it's how you end up getting trapped, right? It doesn't matter if it's a police interview or anything else. The more you talk, the worse. So I want you to be very, very specific with your parameters within the questioning because that allows me to answer them in a way which makes me look the best. I don't know. I feel like... <laughs> I love how that worked, but um, and you guys already like he's not saying anything. He's not he's not running anything that's any different. But he's all see what he's done here. He's planted a seed in her brain that maybe he is a criminal. Maybe there's something criminal about the guy. Yeah, I don't like to answer questions because it's usually like the police. Blah blah blah. Now he hasn't said he could have said yeah. Well, I've been arrested in the past, and they're you know I don't I don't like their question. He could have said that he didn't, but he planted the seed of doubt. Like is he is he not? A very confident man that was very sure of himself would just answer. Do you think so? Mm-hmm. If, if Because I feel like you're just being calculated. Okay, a very innocent man, would he just answer the police? Yeah. If he's innocent. <laughs> <laughs> then you've never dealt with the police, my dear. That's not how it works. No? No, of course not. But that, he's that innocent. It doesn't mean anything. Innocent and guilty in and of itself is a false paradigm. You, you have to understand that the world we live in, there is no black and white. There is, there's no such thing. It's all a sliding scale. If they want to find you guilty, they'll find you guilty. I guarantee you sold something to a, a mate on eBay seven years ago, didn't pay tax, boom, you're going to jail. I'm enjoying this conversation and I understand every point she's making and I'm being deliberately abrasive. However, the truth is about the masculine feminine dynamic is that females like men who are completely in charge and run their life exactly how they want and they comply and bend to the man's wills and lifestyle. To, to come along to a woman and say, how do you want me to be so that you like me is, is, a, death, is a death sentence for the relationship. So. That's how it works. What kind of man do you Just catch that? Because he's he's essentially giving you the play by play. He's telling you what he's doing. Like, did you she she goes, Yeah, a confident man would just answer the question. Mm, yeah, if he was a pro if he was pro-social, but that's not what he's trying to do. He's not trying to be Captain America, he's trying to be uh Tony Stark, right? Or maybe he's trying to be he is, right? He that's his personality. His personality is not Superman, it's Batman. That's the kind of alpha. He's like that. He's the scoundrel alpha. And so therefore, but he can't come out and say, I'm the scoundrel alpha. I'm like James Dean and rebel without a cause. He's not, he can't say that, but he can say it without saying it. Do you guys remember that? Show? Very. I, I know big Mo understands this because I use this in, in, in book one. It's called Dijo Sin Hablando. Hopefully I'm saying this right. Speak without speaking. That's exactly what he's done right here. Like she's getting the message, but he's not like directly answering the question. He is answering the question. He's just not giving her the answer that she wants. Well, I feel like a confident guy would do would go and do that. She's trying to bait him back into that's a shit test, by the way. Like, are you if you were confident, you would do that. Mm, no. And here's I I see what you're doing. Jujitsu, throw it back on you. you Wanna be. I wanna be a man who lives true to himself and a man who goes to sleep easy at night and a man who knows that he's living true to his biological necessities and, and instincts and tries his best not to hurt anybody and leaves a positive impact on the world. Are your actions congruent with your words? Yeah. What else would they be? I don't know. I don't know you. So that's why I'm don't trying know? to get to know you. Uh, yeah, we're here to know each other. Of course yeah. they are. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a positive man. I'm a positively inspirational and motivating person. Okay. What do you do that's motivating? I inspire people to tell the truth, I think. Okay. And I think a lot of... <laughs> Which is what he started the conversation out with. You're only going to tell the truth and I'm going to lie. Men live in a world now today where they have to lie. Do you think? In fact, I would basically guarantee that 99% of men are lying at least 80% of the time. Really? That's a bit bold. I, I think it's true because I think that... So men are liars. Men are liars. 
Women are correct. Men are liars. Women wear makeup because men fall in love with what they see. And men lie because women fall in love with what they hear. Men are liars because men are in constant competition with other men. And they have to find a way to be competitive. And the easiest way to be competitive is to lie. If you can sit there and convince a woman that you're rich because you bought her a $100 or a hundred pound meal, that's what you're going to do. It's a lot easier than becoming rich. And women believe it. And as long as women are stupid enough to believe it, men are dishonest enough to lie. For me personally, I'm the type of woman that it's actions rather than words. I don't get like phased by... Actions can be a lie. You think flowers can't be a lie? <laughs> you think flowers, 25 pounds on a phone call to some dickhead who, delivery dude can't be a lie? No, but there's some like good men that wouldn't, it wouldn't even enter the head that that's a lie. Okay, see what he's doing here? He's escalating. He's amplifying the emotional spot response right here. Like this is almost, it's almost like out of character. It's almost like the... It's almost like uh, he broke character so he could go and just act just a little bit crazy. He'll bring it back down again. By the way, this is a technique that you will hear all of the best like Baptist ministers use. They'll get really, really loud on you, right? And then they'll start talking really quiet so that you can like, you know, you can understand that. Now, here's where the salient point is. I know I've been talking about the Lord, but here's the real message. That's, see what I'm saying? Up, down, up, down. So I feel like everything you're doing is just very calculated life is calculated all it's men not, lie it's, it's really not men lie because not. yeah life life at the upper echelons at the highest echelons of life is absolutely and utterly calculated every single man at the top echelon of life is a calculated man you don't get there by accident okay so do you want to get to the top i'm already at the top echelon of man and when you're at the top echelon of man it's a very very calculated process you don't get there by accident nothing good in life happens on accident when you say men don't lie because you believe in actions i'm saying a lot of actions are lies am i high value women in your eyes you're very good. Okay, so we've gone through high value man and lying and the things that guys have to do. All right. So a lot of this is just some kind of some really back and forth. Now, as I said, the technique wise is it's it's escalating and then declining and escalating and then and coming back down again. So now he, she is going to give him the qualifier. Am I a high quality woman? Now, by the way, this is also a shit test. Now, I'm not saying like women like you're on a date with are going to say the same thing. Maybe they will. A lot of guys have been telling me this recently. They're like, Rolo, should I should I expose the game? Should I tell this girl that I, I listen to you? Should I tell her that I, I read the rational mail? Should I tell her that I'm red pill? Because I think that if we're, if we're all up front and we're all, you know, on the same page and everything, we got to be, uh, you know, women should, you know, say what they mean and mean what they say, right? It's like it's essentially overt communication. But it's a very overt communication about giving away the game. So when that woman comes back to you and she said, like right now, she's still playing with him. Like she, they're still playing together. Like this is still an, an, an this is still a, a fencing match. It's a psychological verb, a verbal fencing match at this point. So now her next thrust is, am I a, uh, a high value woman? Looking. So I would say, uh, yeah, absolutely. You're beautiful. You seem like you're a good person. You seem intelligent. You're not stupid. So I'd say you're a high value woman, but your actions dictate that, right? The most important actions a woman can undertake is loyalty. Every man out here knows that disloyalty is the most disgusting thing a female could ever do to her man. But are you loyal? Let's not pretend that male loyalty and female loyalty are the same thing. But loyalty is loyal. Okay, now he switches it back. Are, am I high value? Well, there's really no way he can, he can answer that question in the affirmative because he just met her. So there's no way that that there's no right answer to that. It's one of these. It's like Kobayashi Maru, right? It's like a no win situation. The only way to win that situation is to reframe it and turn it back again. Verbal jujitsu. Okay. No, but they're not the same thing, are they? Why is it not? Because men and women are not the same. We are not the same. You are correct there. Okay, so we agree. No, but I'm not agreeing to people being dishonest, cheaters, liars. He's deluded. Why do you think men and women are different? We carry children, Correct. you know, we nurture, we're, you know, compassionate, emotional beings. Yep. Men are very different. I agree. However, I don't think it's very fair for men to sit with the opinion that it's acceptable for men to cheat. I didn't even say that, but I think if we, as intelligent, logical beings, as you are and as I am, if we agree that men and women are not the same, then our paradigms on how we act, enact in certain regards cannot be seen as the same. So, right? if, but, so if I'm with you, yeah. And I then cheat. That's disgusting. I can't believe you even said that on, on YouTube. You see, you just said that on YouTube. I'm sorry to the world. Please don't listen to this. Maybe it happens. <laughs> okay, so appeal. He's, he's appealing out to outside, right? Okay, now, this is 
a ver- like let me put myself back up here now when this is like a very kind of bonehead way of expressing this but just bear with me okay <clears throat> When you're in a situation and you've got the girl that's right there and you're talking about this and you want to sort of bring it back to her and she's like, she, she, she screws up. She slips up something like he saw, he saw his moment and he took off on it. Right. Oh my gosh. That's disgusting. How horrible. Right. He's again, it's agree and amplify only he's like using it back on her. So the, the, the amplify part of it is, Hey, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive her, please. You know, that kind of thing. Mystery did something very similar to this where he was like, he would ask her friend, like if you're in a, a, a group setting where he's trying to work one girl, he would say, oh my gosh, is she with you? What do you do something with her already? You know, that kind of thing. That right there is the, the um, first of all, it established, it's what's called command presence. Good, good start for command presence. But it's also about the fact that he's, he's still maintaining frame, but he's still playing that, playing it back on. He's not serious about it. But he's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're like that. Right. You know, that that whole thing. Like, oh, you're too much of a woman for me. Oh, you're, you're trouble. I can tell like that kind of stuff. I'm, that's really a stupid bonehead way of doing it. But he just pulled this off and he was able to pull it off because of what she said. He took what she said, turned it around. Now, if he had gone, oh, man, you look like trouble. You look like the kind of girl that would get me in trouble. Like, and maybe that works in direct game. Like maybe that works in, in certain settings, but it's better. If you can take what she said, turn that into a, an agree and amplify and then give it back to her. And she's like, oh, you know, what, what are you talking about? Remember, attention is the coin of the realm in girl world. So if you can turn that, that it's not really judgment, but if you can take that sort of faked, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you really like that. Right. If you do, you do that and you with a smile and a wink and everything, it's scoundrel game is what it is, but it works better. If it's not something that you generate, it works better if it's something that she generated. No, it, do, no, it doesn't it does. happen. No, People no, no, cheat. no. Please don't say this on YouTube. You're going to corrupt the youth. I'm sorry for her. I'll pray for her. These things can't be said. Women can't do that. <laughs> there Women it is. can't do that. So it's a double standard. It's a double standard. But life is full of double standards. Yeah, but it doesn't mean any, like, listen, regardless of your philosophies and everything that you keep from It's not my philosophy. No, but I'm saying, okay, life is full of double standards. Correct. I understand that. But in a relationship, Correct. it's a partnership. Yes. Right. You and me, we're together. Since when? You know what? Ah, yeah, there it is. Oh my alone. goodness. Since when? Like that? Take her words, use them. Pull that back. Remember, there are like here's one of the things that guys will always ask. And again, what's a good game for direct? What's what's a good book for this? The player's handbook. Everything I'm talking about right now is in my fifth book. Okay. You want it? It's the first link that you see right down there in the description right there. This is such a great advertisement for it. I could not resist. Okay. Sorry for the shameless plug, but that's your plug. Okay. Everything that, that he's just gotten into, everything he just said. Did you see what he just did? Did you see him pull that back? Hey, we're together. Oh, we're, we're together now? Cool. We're on the insta date, right? Oh, right on. Oh, I guess we're, are we married now? Where did we get married? Like, then you sort of build this backstory that's all bullshit, but you build this backstory up like that's building that familiarity. So it's like, oh, well, well, well if you or me were together, oh, is that a thought? <laughs> you know, if you and I were to, like, sometimes it's also called future forecasting. I don't know if you guys understand what future forecasting is. Future forecasting is this is like, I see us with a future together. That's what it comes down to. And by the way, like Andrew's good at this. You know who's better? Tristan. Tristan is like, and I should also point, I hate to give away uh, Justin, but Justin Waller is also very good at future forecasting. I've had long discussions about future forecasting with him as far as game is concerned. Like when we talk about like dark game, when we talk about like um, dark triad game, where you talk about game where it's just like, all it is is about women on the roster. Future forecasting is your best friend. And that's exactly what he did. Only he did it when she gave it back to him. Did you see how deftly he pulled that back? Oh, we're, we're, we have a future together. Oh, yeah, of course. We're, where do we get married? When do we get married? Was it a June bride? <laughs> were you a June bride? You know, that kind of stuff. You start building up along that fantasy. And now she's building this backstory and he's going along with it because it's part of that. Oh, once again, it is verbal Aikido, right? It's verbal jujitsu. It's verbal judo. Life with someone. Yeah. The end goal is you two together. Agreed. So why cheat? I know, I understand where you're coming from. My point is that relationships and life is full of double standards as a whole. A man's gonna pay for everything everywhere you go, right? This is, this is, do, is a man. Do you agree? No, I do like traditional. Okay, so you agree, so you're traditional, right? So if you wanna talk about traditional, let's talk about tradition. Every single man since the dawn of human time had more than one woman. 
Every single king, every single emperor, every single sultan, every single conqueror since the dawn of human time had more than one woman. All of them. Every single one. Read his. As I said, this is straight out of. Well, first of all, this. I'm not saying he ripped me off or anything. I he probably didn't, but I got to remember. I actually pulled this from Dr. Hector Garcia. That's really where this is all coming from. The what has defined powerful men in the past is territory, resources, and access to beautiful women. History book. Read the Bible. It's all in there. The Quran. All of it. You want to talk about tradition, it's all there. The only reason your mind is different, the only reason you believe differently is because of society. Society's come along and told you so. Yeah, but society, we can change. Like, the world evolves, things change. The world evolves, yeah, that's right. Now, now, now men can't cut their dicks off and their chicks. You believe in this shit? You got the vaccine? You believe in any of this crap? It's all a lie. I feel like life's the, about choices. Life is about choices, correct. My point is this. If I had a woman, I would decide not to cheat because I decide. However, I would not see my infidelity as nearly anywhere near even 1% as disgusting as female infidelity, because female infidelity dis involves emotion. You will not sleep with a man you don't like. I can sleep with a woman I don't like. It's completely a different thing. I can be head over heels in love with a woman, ready to die for her, ready to take a bullet for her, protect her, give her all the money in the world, make sure she has a beautiful family, a nice big house, all of it. And I'll still f*** that bitch. Watch me. A woman won't do that. So don't lie to me and pretend. No, you won't. Any woman who will sit here and say, I can dudes and not care about them is fundamentally broken. Her soul is broken. Okay, well, she's broken then, but she's still doing it. Well, if she's broken, she ain't anywhere near me. I don't want no broken bitch near me. I'm Catch that? Escalate? Even uh, He raises his voice, right? Obviously. But he ex escalates the emotional appeal, right? That's disgusting. Looking for approval from the congregation, right? It's exactly what... It's exactly what... Um, Presbyterian, that's exactly what uh, certainly Baptist ministers have been using uh, for a technique, for a speech technique for a very long time. Okay. She's going to protest against this because it goes against her sort of like strong independent woman narrative. She's very, she's very locked into this. There's absolutely no way on planet earth that he would ever entertain having sex with this chick or ever having a relationship. He probably would not even make Sean, Sean will most likely not even make Sean a, a, a plate to spin, but He's making an example of her, and this again, this is a really good example of good game. But also, <clears throat> excuse me. Also, he is making that mass appeal. He's appealing to the congregation. And he comes and brings it back down. He says, "Here's why it's important." Right. So he's made some good, some some very good points here. She's gonna like it's gonna grate on her soul in a moment. But the fact that he's like, "This is disgusting." You're you're disgusting. And then he also makes a good point here as well, which <clears throat> has been in. The red pill, you know, communities for a very long time is that, and hell, even <clears throat> evolutionary psychology, men and women cheat for different reasons. Men cheat because it's like opportunity, right? Men cheat because it's a physical thing. Women cheat because it's an emotional thing. And so for women, when women are looking for a guy outside of the relationship, it's usually because she's trying to get something that she's, she can't get inside the relationship. So when, for instance, and I've said this before, I'll just repeat this really quickly here, is that when a woman cheats, the man is more concerned about where did you bang him? Was it on her bed? Was it in the kitchen? Was it in the bathroom? Is his dick bigger than mine? Blah, blah, blah. It's always, uh, and it's like, I've heard guys say this. They'll say, oh, it's all about uh, whether or not the guy had a bigger dick or he like banged her in a different way. And, and in a sense, that's true. That's part of it for sure. But it's also about location. It's also about determining like what the act entailed. And women lose their shit on that because like, no, why is that important? Ah, I fucked them here. I fucked them there. You'll see this in, um, uh, you'll see, I forget the Netflix series. I forget the name of the, it might've been like uh, life or marriage or something. I think it was, um, uh, Scarlett Johansson and, uh, and, and driver. Uh, what the fuck is his name? Anyways, uh, th there's like, if you look at series where there are, uh, describing infidelity on the part of a woman, the guy usually loses his shit about the physical aspect of it. Whereas in women, you want to know why women are more forgiving of a man cheating is because it's not about the sex so much as it's about lo loss of resources, loss of investment, loss of the, the three Ps, like provisioning, protection, and parental investment. That's what women focus on when it comes to infidelity, it's not so much about like banging another, another chick, right? I mean, yeah, that might just take one girl, right? Well, that's the act. And so I'm done, blah, blah, blah. The other thing is when women, women are far more likely to forgive a man cheating than a woman, than a man is to forgive a woman of cheating because for men, their primary interest in that infidelity is, is the kid mine. And it comes, it comes back. You want to know what we just said this a minute ago, men and women are different. Yes, they definitely are. And we have definite, uh, we have definite, different, mating strategies and they're adversarial. 
So when you've got these two people who have agreed to compromise those mating strategies, it's a breach of trust and not just trust, but it's a breach of that contract or that, um, what's that, that a uh, unspoken contract or whatever it is, whatever you want to say. So as I've said before, and this is in, you'll find this in uh, book five. You'll also find it in, uh, I want to say it's in book two as well. The cardinal rule of, of, uh, of sexual strategies is that for one person's, for one sex's sexual strategy to be successful, to be fulfilled, the other must compromise or abandon their own. And for right now in a gynocentric social order, that means most beta males have to abandon it altogether. And this is why you have this conflict between a guy like Tate and a, and a chick like this. Her interest right now at 33 years old with, with a, as a single mother, she is very much looking for a guy who has the three Ps, right? He's got to be hot and fun and everything else, but she's much more concerned with protection, provisioning, and parental investment for her child that was you know, sired by another man, right? So that's why she's like, well, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't want a man to go and cheat. Yeah, well, because she's more worried about the loss of investment and especially at her age, very, very uh, comes to for emphasized, highlighted right now to worry about loss of investment. So if she's, oh, well, she just mentioned a minute ago, you know, if you and I were together, mm, okay, so you're saying it's okay for you to cheat. Well, he's saying if I don't cheat, it's because I have such an investment in you and you should appreciate that. That's where I come from, by the way, as well. So when people say, well, Rolo, do you agree with Kevin Samuels saying, oh, uh, a high value man deserves to cheat or he gets to cheat or he should cheat, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, here's the thing. High value guys are the guys that other men want to be and other women want to fuck. And as I said on this show and God knows how many other shows I've also said as well is like women love a man who could cheat. They don't want a man to cheat. They love a man who could cheat. And so do you think for a moment, of you, if all her girlfriends and all her sisters and all whatever else are saying, you know what, you know, uh, Mrs. Tomasi, man, your, your role is looking really hot. And if you don't want him, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get him. I'm definitely going to, um, you, you're so lucky to be with that guy. You have such a great relationship. I can't believe that because here's a guy who could go out there and actually cheat on you if he wanted to, but he doesn't because he loves you because he has an investment in you because he has something that is special with you. Right. He could. His, uh, the opportunity is there. It's just like when when Jordan Peterson talks about like and, and even Tate here talks about how like a guy who is a dangerous man is the guy who is like he has the capacity for, for violence. He's a black belt, but he chooses not to use it or he only uses it in the situations that are the most dire. Right. Where it where the situation necessitates him being a black belt, him using that force. Right. Well, you never know that if you just look at a guy. Right. People don't understand that there is a. But like the difference between cowardice and like control, self-control is this is a curb this high. It's a, it's splitting hairs because if you don't know that Andrew Tate is already a, you know, an MMA champion, or you don't know that like John Fitch has won, you know, championship belts and you just see him in the seven 11, you probably think he's like, especially sorry, John, I mean, to tell you all, but if you look at him, he looks like he's from easy rider. You think he's, he's, he seems like an easy mark. But he probably would kick your ass, right? But you won't appreciate that unless he kicks your ass. So there has to be some sort of qualifiable, there has to be some sort of third party confirmation. That's where dread comes from, right? Now, I don't go for it, man. She already, she already knows. She already knows this shit, right? She appreciates me because she knows that I'm a guy that other women find attractive and that I'm also a guy that other guys want to be. She appreciates that. And that's how that, that makes for a much healthier relationship than walking on eggshells, than worrying about my next words that come out of my mouth. Right. I would much rather say, you know what? The proof's in the pudding, the proof's in my bank account, the proof's in my body, the proof's in who my, the last 25 years that I've lived. Right. And that's the whole thing. It's like, so when people, like people throw this at me all the time, they'll go, Rolla, well, if you were really a high value man, you you wouldn't be married for so long. You you can't be a red pill. You're married. You can't be married. You're a red pill. Well, the, the, if that's your if that's your thing, so I I love it when people go, well, you know, Rolla can't be a red pill because he's married. Blah, blah blah. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Divorce my wife so that I can like appeal to you that much better? Like I'll be a more alpha dude if I do that, or would I be less of an alpha for doing that because I'm abandoning my wife and my investment, my commitments, and everything else? See, yeah, there's it's Kobayashi Maru, right? There's no way to win that situation. The way that you win that is you understand that you're a black belt and you can use that black belt when you want to. It's not cowardice to say, you know what? 
I could have multiple women. I could go out and cheat on my wife. I could go and do these things. I choose not to because I have a strong relationship with my wife. I have a strong relationship with my family. A strong rela My dogs would look down on me if I did something like that. You guys certainly would too, right? Well, it's not about social pressure. It's the fact that that's what I choose to do. It's a lifestyle choice at that point. I have no reason to. But the thing is, what makes you desirable, what makes you a high quality guy is still the same thing. Love a man who, uh, they don't want a man to cheat, but they love a man who could cheat. If you're the kind of guy who doesn't have a black belt, if you're, the, if you're a white belt and you want to go, and you want to say, well, I'm the guy that can go and kick any black belt's ass, right? But you're a white belt. That, all, that, that means a lot up until the point where you have to get in the ring with a black belt. If you don't have the goods, like right? even when, like I was saying before, um, when Jordan Peterson is talking about, you know, dangerous men, you know, we need more dangerous men because, you know, weak men are screwing things up. Well, the problem is you can't tell who the dangerous men are and who they aren't right now. Guy, like I said, a guy might deceive you. He might might be, you know, and you don't know the difference, but a guy walks away from a fight, right? If he's a black belt and you know he's a black belt, you go, well, man, that took a lot of self-control on his part. And you know the dude. But if you don't, you're like, what a pussy. Oh, I kicked that guy's ass, right? Yeah, but he probably would have killed the dude and went to jail for it for, you know, for, you know, for stupid shit, right? Over a beer, <laughs> you know? So cowardice and competence are all dependent upon whether or not you know that person's character and you know that person's background. And today, you simply don't know that, particularly in the age of social media. Definitely sure women would cheat, cheat on you. You think so? Mm -hmm. Well, those are the kind of women I will not associate with. Females shouldn't even want to cheat. And the reason women can't cheat is because there's no way to ensure paternity of a female's cheating. There Modern is. science in and of itself, just because you can now find out who the dad is, doesn't undo 5,000 years of human evolution in which a female had to be loyal to one man so we knew exactly who the father was. Sounds like Tate's been reading up. <laughs> a man has multiple partners, you know who the mother is, you know who the father is. If a woman has multiple partners, nobody knows who the dad is, nobody wants to look after the kid, and a woman with a child without a father or without a man around in the ancient world was toast. He talks a lot of nothing. I would never ever be with a girl who cheats on me, and I would never yeah, ever. You can't. You can't. You can't. Yes. Did you catch that? Did you catch this? I'll, I'll continue really quick. Did you catch that? He gives this like very express, explicit answer. Paternity, which of course you've heard me talk on this show on Fresh and Fit and everything else. That's why men fixate on the let's say the visceral details of infidelity. Right. I want to know whether that guy fucked you. He came in you. He had a bigger dick than I did. You're more sat sexually satisfied with that guy, and you would do it again. Uh, that's men's primary. They don't care about the emotional investment because men can separate emotion from sex. That's why. And if you don't believe me, just go and look at all the guys who are addicted to porn. They separated. Every time you, you rub one out, you're doing exactly that. Men don't have a problem disconnecting emotion from sex. Women, on the other hand, have to have, to have some sort of emotional investment in that. And if they don't have it before they have sex, they have that emotional investment afterwards or they consider that emotional investment afterwards. That's why it takes a long, a long time for women to go from being like, you want to know why OnlyFans is so seductive for women? And I know the stats and I, I, I get it, right? But one of the reasons besides the, the money is it's like being a stripper, but you don't have to, you're doing it from the comfort of your own home. It's just like a camera, it's just a camera here. But I'm the only one that's like, no, hell, even Ned's not even in here today. It's a comfort from your own home. You can be a stripper, you can be as sexual as you want. And millions and millions of people will pay you for the luxury of watching you and pretending that they have some sort of intimate connection with you. Yeah, I'm very seductive because the the uh, the minimum there's a minimum of emotional investment in it, but you can still be sexual and you can still get the money out of it and you I mean obviously there's financial considerations. But the thing is is like what does that teach women? It teaches them to disassociate emotion from sex. So when you got a, a girl who's like a longtime porn star, sex is just like a bodily function. Rather than I want to be intimate with my partner, I'm saving, reserving this sexuality just for the guy who's going to put a baby in me or who's going to provide for me, protect me, and be parentally invested in the baby that he puts into me. That's that's the difference. People will say, well, you know, can't, well, women can't be, you know, some, some guys are like, everybody takes an absolutist stance on this, by the way. Well, women can't have sex with you unless they have, they have feelings for you. Mm. No, they can separate that. We can we can definitely see that, but it takes much more for a woman to separate herself from the sex act and the emotional investment in the sex act than it does for a guy. That's why pornography is and always will be more popular with men. 
because we don't have an innate proclivity to invest ourselves emotionally in the people that we fuck. Same thing with women. Women have, they have an innate proclivity. Can they get past that? Can they change the software to override the firmware? Absolutely they can. You see that at every free, go to, go down to electric Daisy festival and you'll see, go to Coachella, go to burning man. You'll see lots and lots of women who have had the software has overridden the evolutionary firmware. Trust me. Can it happen? Yes. And more and more so today than ever before, because we have hormonal birth control and we put reproduction in the hands of women. So can women do it? Yeah, but not as easy as men can. I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Of course I can. No, you can't. Like, because the thing is, like, this is just an assumption. I'm assuming, you know, you have a nice life. No, but I'm saying you have a nice life. You live a good lifestyle. Women (laughs) will just see you as an opportunity. (laughs) If I was a a dumbass, yeah, correct. Yeah, but this one said, but your attitude is what keeps a woman also. Like, do you think a high value woman is going to sit there and tolerate a man condescending and talking to her and being like, we're different and we're this, we're that, because we're not. A woman, knows her, a woman that knows her worth is not going to tolerate that. As professionals, we discussed the infidelity of females. Mm-hmm. And I said that female infidelity is more disgusting than male infidelity. And I think that the world agrees with me. His- yeah, they do, because it takes more for a woman to separate herself emotionally from the sex act than it does for men. That's why. And that's, by the way, that's why there's an innate revulsion to women who can do that like at the drop of a hat. So that's the, like the the easier it is, the more disgusting it happens to be. And I'm not saying this out of a a sense of morality. I'm saying this from a, an evolutionary perspective because it's the human revulsion response. History agrees with me. The Bible agrees with me. The Quran agrees with me. Every single book you can read from history says that females who are Uh should either be stoned to death or at least cast out from society. Female promiscuity is a brand new concept. This is brand new amongst society. Mm -hmm. The idea that women can sleep with a bunch of dudes and it doesn't matter is a brand new idea. 30, 40 years old, maybe. Even today, nobody respects it, deep down. When a girl shoots a girl she doesn't like, you know the first thing she does? She says she's a You know why? Because they know deep down that female promiscuity is disgusting, it's revolting. So the whole idea of a female wanting to sleep with more than one man at a time is haram. And they know it inside of their souls, inside of their hearts. I don't think so. As yes, they do, as does a man. No. Whereas a man, if he sleeps with a bunch of chicks, doesn't matter, who cares? So would you be with me if I had slept with over 50 men? Oh boy, okay, let me just catch up right quick here. Um, so everything he said up to this point, as far as uh, the, the thing, the point that I, I, he guys know what I'm gonna talk about anyway. So I'm just gonna like throw, but there was one actually new point that he made. And I've been trying to point this out for a while. Uh, I try to do it like unsuccessfully, I think, whenever I'm criticizing Peterson or, or uh, David Buss or whoever else. But this is a new situation. Okay. The idea that women and men can have sex without the worry of um, pregnancy as a result of hormonal birth control. That, uh, and it's not 40 years, Tate. It's uh, more like 60 years <laughs> um, since 1965. And you can trace back everything from... When we look at like the divorce rate, like I, I think I've already shown you these guys, these stats and everything else before. But if you look at the, uh, the divorce rate, if you look at um, if you look at the, the the decline in marriage, if you look at the age of first marriage, all those trace back to one point, And that is about 1965, 67, somewhere out there. And that's when hormonal birth control really started taking off. That was the birth of the, that was the beginning of the experiment. And here we are in 2022 and we're looking at the products of that experiment. And he is absolutely hundred percent right. I'm glad he brought it up. <laughs> I'm a high value woman, right? <laughs> you said it yourself. You like that? Did you catch that? Of course you caught that. It seems like he's like insane, right? Oh, he's laughing and he's like the joker, right? Now the sudden, now suddenly he's an incel. He's a, he's a joker, right? But he's not. This is calculated is what this is, right? So he's still full of himself and he jumps from the extreme down to like, okay, and I'm going to be real with you, right? Ah, haram! And then he comes back down for it, right? And he, this is where he comes down to. How can you be high value? 50 men have slept with you. What if I've just been single for a long time? No, unacceptable. Haram. Why is it unacceptable? Haram. A body count is probably the number one most easiest way to judge the value of a female. I actually think okay. that 90, no, 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 no. I'm going to say this. I think 99% of the world's problems, and no one's going to understand this, but if you can extrapolate, if you can listen to this statement and extrapolate it out towards society at large, 
I think 99% of the world's problems would be solved if females walked through life with their body count on their forehead. Because it would prevent, because it would prevent all of the disintegration of morals. It would prevent so many things about the world. But you know what, there's like a and lot women would be like, to be with me as a man, I don't want to put another number on my forehead. You have to be a good man. They wouldn't stop f***ing these idiots and stop being idiots. And all the idiocy would disappear. All the degeneracy would disappear. Families would return. Virgins meeting their first man, staying with him her whole life and being proud of it. Wouldn't, couldn't we go back to such a beautiful age? All we have to do is start putting numbers on girls' foreheads. We could fix everything. That attitude is disgusting. It's not about women's body count. That would not like minimize any problems. Men like you are the problem, Andrew. Women. Okay, why does she say this? And now we're getting to the nuts and bolts. Okay, so the game, the game side of things, like we can come back to that, right? But now he's he's declared something that is going to set fundamentally great against her own sort of ego invested beliefs. Okay, she is a strong, independent woman. She's got her own damn show. She's he's only one. He's only one dick that's rolled through this show, right? He's just one more dude. But she is never going to forget this dude. And no one else is either. And I don't know what the, the view count is on this just yet, but I got to say it's probably pushing a million. I, maybe it is. I don't know. But I do know that it's been very popular and she's not going to forget this guy for a long time. Why? Because he says things that fundamentally great on her soul. Right. And I mean that in the in the truest sense. I don't mean a spiritual sense. I mean that in a sense that like the things that she fundamentally believes in, in this case, right, she doesn't, she, she remember, he just brought this point up a second ago. She's a product of that experiment. She's a product of the experiment that is female promiscuity in the wake of hormonal birth control. She's 33 years old. Okay. That, what, what does that make her? That means she was born in the 90s, like 90, 89, 90, see, 89, something like that. Okay. That's where she's at. She's got one kid under her belt. She doesn't want to be judged for having 10 partners, 100 partners. Who knows what her, her notch count is and who cares really at this point? Because Andrew, a guy like Andrew Tate is not going to have anything to do with a single mother who's 33 years old. She knows that. He knows that. Okay. You want to talk about playing the game and play with her? That's the, the playing part that's going on here now. But she's not going to let this go because it goes against who she is as a person. So it's not about the belief at this point. It's not about the fact that he goes, you know, uh, women who, with a high body count are disgusting. <gasps> like he's now haram. He, he's now, he's now, he's now haram, right? He's now the guy that she's against because he has not attacked promiscuity. He has attacked her because she believes in promiscuity. She thinks that that's the way it ought to be. Okay. She's already got a kid by another man. So she's already in a fundamental handicap. All right. Now, whether okay but is marriage the goal is that the victory does that mean like well she's got a guy now right so therefore she's she's she won the game ha <laughs> ha sorry cash out you're wrong rollo right michaela peterson i told you i only mentioned her once right yes i know she's married now yes i also know that the guy is what seven years younger than she is and yes she's still michaela peterson we'll wait we'll see we'll see how this plays out I, in fact, I'm enjoying this. I'm absolutely entertained by the whole thing, particularly in light of the fact that she was looking for a babysitter in Miami on on Instagram. Like, where is Jordan and all this? <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> Where's the husband? Is the husband supposed to be in charge of this thing? Because if I, that was my even if I signed up for to be stepdaddy, I would be like, are you out of your mind? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and in this case right now he has fundamental you want to know why 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 michaela got so upset with me that's why because i told her something that is, goes fundamentally against her personality that's an ego investment okay jordan is on xanax probably is no he's on he's on uh, uh allergy medicine i thought <laughs> no um but like it's, it's, that's what she said because she knows and like most women like the one of the reasons why women get really upset even drew Afwalo, you know <laughs> But Drew Afwalo got all bent out, bent out of shape at me because I pointed out exactly what what uh, Andrew is like months and months ago. Is that men have a tough time pair bonding with women who have lots and lots of partners, and women who have who are more promiscuous, promiscuous have more. Uh, what's it at? 
6 million views. Son of a bitch. Wow. It is at 6 million views. Thanks for that. I'm, I, I, Sam Botta just sent me the, the stats. This is at 6 million views right now. You want to know why I started doing this? This is why. <laughs> 6 million views. Holy mother of God. So, but that's, and um, thank God, you know, thank goodness for all this crap, you know, thank goodness for having this conversation. But the reason why she's upset and the reason why Drew Raffalo was upset and the reason why all these other chicks who got, get bent out of shape because men even question or bring up the idea that it might be not be in a woman's interest to have a lot of a lot of sex partners is because they've had those sex partners. There's documentation of it. It's online. It's on Instagram. It's on God knows whatever else. And they don't want to be judged. That's why you have this non-judgmentalism. They want to be able to get away with it. They want to, they don't want their sexual past to define who they are in the future. Because if it did, they wouldn't get with a high value guy because they understand this on a hindbrain, lizard brain, instinctive level. That's why they know, women know on a gut level, he even brought up the slut paradox here, right? It's like, well, if that's the case, then why do women fight with other women by calling them sluts? Women call women slut shame way, way more than men do online and offline. Why is that the go to disqualification? Because they know because they know that a promiscuous woman is is has less value, at least in the sexual marketplace, has less value than a woman who doesn't or has fewer partners because the odds are she's not connected. She's not pining. She's not an alpha widow. She didn't have some like, how do I know? How does how does Tate know? that she's still not pining for the guy who put a baby in her and she's a single mother at 33. How? When did she have that kid? That's another thing I would ask too. I don't know when she, when she gave birth, like how old is the child, right? But 6 million views later, the fact, of the, the fact remains, she has an ego investment in making sure that she and other women that are just like her convince men and mankind that they not be judgmental about all of it because and she'll she'll fall back on this. How come guys can go and fuck whoever they want to? And he's going to try. It's going to be this complete like no. Like, they're speaking a different language at this point. I myself am one of them. I'm sick of men that have this really disgusting outlook on women policing women's bodies. Listen, if I want to. Okay. It's not policing. Women police other women's bodies. They do so by trying to disqualify them by what? Calling them sluts. That's why. It's not just men. They're not trying to police their body. They're just saying, look, I choose not to be with a woman who has a lot of, of sexual partners. I feel innate, visceral, human, evolved disgust at that. And you're asking me to train myself not to because it works in your best interests. I sit with as many people I can and I will. Yeah. But what you're not getting is... There's this whole hyper toxic independent movement of women, right? We are doing things because it's kind of now it's our choice, but it's kind of like by force in the sense of it's like we're so liberated yeah. because we're literally exhausted with men on their power trip, on their this. So it's like, oh, if you can do it, we can do it. But this is what I said, but you, you men that think the way you think have created that. I understand your point. Okay. So what she's done is she's essentially based her understand her, her her feeling of judge being judged not on this the the dynamics of the game that she's playing but she's trying to throw it back on guys and I, you will hear trad cons use this all the time matt walsh is a great example of this if men would be just be better then women would fall in line everything that's that the, all the problems with women that men have with women is men's fault no women okay so are women just like these automatons are they puppets are they not making decisions for themselves? Because according to my watch, really since like 1970, women have been pretty much empowered. And she, so are you a victim or are you Wonder Woman? That's the, that's the paradox of feminism. It teaches women that they are simultaneously a victim and at the same time, like super powerful. They're strong and independent. We make our own damn money. I can do what the hell, what the hell I want. I don't need a man. I want a man, right? There's that. And then there's like, oh, well, this is patriarchal society and there's toxic men like you that are making this happen for us. So are you a victim or are you Wonder Woman? What is it? Because you don't get to be what hyper agency and hypo agency in the same time. What is it? And women will never be able to sort that out for themselves because they don't know the answer, which he's going to give here in just a second. But before I get to that, I do need to go. And I have too many uh, super chats to get to. And we are at 220. So I'm going to get to your super chats right now. 
Uh, Blackout Red says, if I had uh, to rate financial, physical, and mental health in order of importance, I would choose mental health first game. Yes. Thank you for that very much. And uh, Ostrike says, in front of an audience, a woman never hams up her attraction. She will she will only act less attracted to a stranger. On F and F, always pass, never smash. Yeah, exactly. Because they, why is that? Because they don't want to give the impression that they are in any way loose. That's again, it's that attraction. Like, what are you attracted to? Right, pa- pass or smash. Like, there's very. Few, I, I am actually impressed when women say that they will smash. Because it's almost like they're trying to be like, "Mm." because the guy that they would smash has to be like top tier four and a half percent or guy, right? Uh, Lord of Panic, afternoon roll up, afternoon. Off topic, how great. However, I've been a musician and a producer for 11 years, specializing in orchestra and urban uh, instrumental instrumentals. Any books on music theory you recommend? No, but I will say this. If you want to learn music theory as a guitar player, I, I'm, I guess keyboards work too. Go look up Shredmaster Scott and his programs. He's got a Patreon, but he's got a lot of like online resources. Shredmaster Scott, S-H-R-E-D, Master Scott, S-C-O-T-T, I believe is what it is. Good friend, good dude. Uh, Sam Whiskey. Hey, Rolo, what are your thoughts on the Napoleon complex? I kind of did that already. Um, yeah. Uh, Sancho. Okay. got that. Uh, nothing wrong with TRT. I'm off. I'm off it now. Uh, you'll be surprised that all you have to, uh, all you have to be is not have a fat stomach, like not even to need a six pack, just get swollen. Sw- size the prize. Swole is the goal. Uh, this seems like an elaborate foreplay. Yeah. And by the end of this, well, I, I don't know if I'm going to get to the whole thing. because it's going to take forever to get to, to, to mow through this. But yeah, to, she, at the end of it, you can see she wants to have this after six million views. You damn, you're goddamn right it is. Yeah, you're goddamn right. Uh, Rolo, what's the day? Uh, what day is the month of the Patreon? OK, Patreon is going to be sorry, Alex. I see you in there. Uh, if you're part of my Patreon group, uh, let's see. I think I, I believe I said the 14th, wasn't? It? Oh no, no. Uh, this. Let's see. Yeah, this the 14th. Let's see. It's the 10th. Let's see. Yeah. Um, it'll be either the 13th or the 14th. If you got actually, you know what? We'll do it the 13th. July 13th will be the next conference for all you guys. By the way, and if you you're wondering what the hell Alex is asking me about, I do private counseling, uh, one on one. So if you guys are still interested in that, um, I have. Gosh, how many guys do I have now? I got four different guys that I'm doing private one on ones with right now. And then I also have my monthly Patreon group chat, which is a two hour group chat. It's at just at the highest tier of my uh, my Patreon group, which is like two hundred dollars. But for that, you get a two hour uh, talk with me. Um, and then everybody else too. It's sort of like, you know, we get together and we like if you think you are unique and your problem is I like, trust me, you are not. Uh, if that seems like it's a, a better alternative for you, that's why I do that. So that you guys can have like, I guess, more affordable to be, um, to talk with other guys. It's just sort of a community. I believe we have 14 or 15. I limit it to 25. So there's at least 10 more spots right now um, for the uh, the group thing. Uh, I do that once a month, uh, usually about the middle of the month and the middle of the week. So it will be on the 13th of July. Alex, thank you for your concern. Thank you for your support. Uh, Kimo, Kimo, um, which means James in Hawaiian, by the way. Uh, women love banter. It's fun. So uh, fun as fuck. So might as well play the game. Just let her know the style of play uh, you're cool with as it goes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Austin, 38 special said it best. Hold on loosely, but don't let, but don't let go. Okay, um, I can't sing. Not right now. Anyways, um, thanks for all you do. Uh, done uh, and saving lives, Rolo. You are welcome. Thank you very much for that nostalgic ride back to 38 Special Land. <laughs> uh, Lord Panic, I find making money and getting a better physique quite easy, but I assume you'll f- I'll find applying game difficult. Why? Synergies, my friend. If you've got a, if you've got irons in the fire as a result of making money and looking good, why would you not use the confidence that is derived from those options to help you with your game? synergies 
Do you think game is the most difficult when building frame? No, I don't. Because if you're doing it all together at once, again, as I said before, it is synergistic, right? So one builds upon the other. As I said before, if you've got a lot of money and you're in really great shape, you look like Dan Bilzerian, right? The only thing is, is like you're kind of incongruent and you're kind of like unsure of yourself and you're not like, I don't know what to do with all this newfound fame and everything else. Well, the, the thing is, is if, if you are developing all of that at the same time, most guys will say this, Rolo, when I got, when I trimmed down, I start getting thinner and everything else. And I got some, you know, I got get jacked and juicy as fuck. When I, when I suddenly I turned into this guy with, with muscles and everything, suddenly women started rewarding me with attention. And they said, I'm hot and they want to go out on dates with me. Well, great. The problem, the only problem at that point, the only inhibitor for you at that point, particularly with your game and your, uh, your confidence, by the way, we'll talk about that here in a little while. The reason is, is because you're like, okay, I got other chicks that want to get with me. It's kind of like having another job when you tell your boss, hey, I'm giving you my two weeks notice. Uh, Joe down the road is going to hire me because uh, he's going to pay me an extra 10 grand. You're way more confident, way more cocky, and way more um, self-assured, let's just say, if you've got other irons in the fire. That's why I say spin plates, not because you, you're going to go and bang anything on two legs, not because you just want to get, it's not about increasing notch count as much as it is about increasing confidence and experimenting, manifesting behaviors that you would not manifest if you only had one chick. If you only have yet a scarcity mentality, I don't care how good looking you are. I don't care how fucking rich you are. If you have a scarcity mentality and you only think in blue pill terms and you only think, oh, I can only be with one woman, right? Even though you have the money and you have the app and you have the, the, the maybe even the game, but if you have the money, you have the, the muscles and everything else, but you don't have that mindset where it's like, well, I'm tiger fucking woods and I can do what I want to, right? I'm, you know, I'm a rock star. I'm an athlete. I can do this if I want to right? It's not about arrogance. It's about understanding your own value. You don't have to do that. You don't have to sleep with a lot of women, but knowing that you could, women don't want a man to cheat, but they love a man who could cheat because he has muscles. He has got money and other chicks, obviously, clearly third party dread, passive dread, want to fuck that guy. That's why. And you know what? When a woman says, wow, geez, he could get what he's way higher than you want to know what the most um, healthy, like uh, attachments that women have with a husband is when the guy is one point ahead of her or above her in sexual market value. I'm like, well, you got to date ugly chicks. No, you might get with a chick who's like maybe at or above you in sexual market value. But over time, you're going to go up. If you take care of yourself and you put yourself into a position where you're maximizing your potential, you're going to go up one, maybe two points while she's going to drop one as she gets into her 30s, into her 40s. That's simply the way reality works. And that's why you want to know why she's bristling at all of this. Because she's 33 and she knows that the time is, sh the time is short. Let him who has understanding reckon the number of the bitch, right? She knows. Time's up. Time's almost up. Most women, you want to know why women are crying at 36, 38 years old on to Steve Harvey? Where's my man? I was promised if I did all this great stuff that I would have a man. And he's going to go off and he's going to just saddle up next to me and arrive on my doorstep. And we're going to go off and have a turnkey relationship. Where's my man? Right? The, the closer they get to 36, 38, whatever. Where's my man? That, you're gonna, that's when you hear women talk about that. Yeah, of course. So when a guy, so when we're talking about sexual market value in, in a comparative way, the, the one reason, I don't know if he's brought this up yet, maybe he will later on, but when he talks, when, when we talk about like a woman's value, she's going to get really pissed off here because she is conflating sexual market value with personal value, personal worth. I've got, I'm a, I'm a bad bitch. Look at me. Are, are I not, am I not a alpha female? I'm, I'm a mom. I, I make money. I, I have a kid. I'm just looking for the right guy. These men, these juvenile men like you and your toxic, um, you know, mentality about this stuff. Um, you guys are the ones screwing up the program. You, uh, if, if it weren't for guys like you, I'd be married already and I'd have a family and we would, everything would be great. Feminism would work if guys would just fucking cooperate. That's essentially what she's saying. And they don't understand that go on Steve Harvey, like I said, and cry about it. She'll cry about it too later on. She'll cry about it at some point. Oh, I can't find a man. And even if she does find a man, she's not going to get with a guy like, like Tate. 
I'm not gonna get with a guy who's like who she believes she deserves. That's for damn sure. Uh, hi, Rolo. Uh, a question about your essay about act uh, acing the t- oh acing the test. Uh, what is the best way to pass a passive fitness test? Okay, so a passive fitness test is is it's the um, the test you get once you are really inside of a LTR. Usually, if you're already in a relationship with a woman, there's two types of shit tests. The first one is the active. He this everything that's been thrown at at um at Tate in this whole interview has been active shit tests. Okay, it's defining quality it's determined but the the test is used to determine whether or not the guy is real are you really who are you really Andrew Tate? are you really an alpha male are you really like this are right, is this really you or is this some mask of masculinity that you put on i gotta use my i've gotta use my feminine intuition and see if i can figure you out right that's an active shit test. A passive shit test is when you're already in a relationship and that woman goes, oh, my mom was right about you. You're never going to amount to anything. Why is the mom not mode? Nag, 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 bitch, bitch, bitch. Passive aggressiveness, passive aggressiveness. All of that kind of stuff. And, and Mary guys know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to a passive test. And what that is, is it's, it's you know, innuendo it's 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 language that it's like i said passive aggressive language it's the kind of thing where it's like is he really the best i can do and that's what it comes down to okay it's uh it's she married superman and you turned into clark kent so the easy if you want an easy way to pass those tests is to acknowledge those things don't call them out see them for what they are and then use that knowledge to like either head her off at the pass or find someone. Here's the best way to pass passive tests. Find a third, find third party um, affirmation. Okay. So get, get in better shape, like do something acknowledged by, uh, by a lot of guys, like, become the guy that other men want to be and other women want to bang, but don't do it and say, Hey, Hey, bitch, other women want to fuck me. That's not how you, that's not how you pass a passive test. Her girlfriends say, man, Tom, Mr. Tomasi is looking pretty good. That will pass that test. It, few men, especially in marriages today, the very f- precious few men have the occasion for the social proof that they used to have when they were single. Like when they're passing active tests, it's so much easier when somebody goes, yeah, dude, this guy's the man. You want to know about dark game? That's how like Sterling Cooper and, and, and Justin Waller and a lot of these guys, when it comes to dark game, you have wingman and that wingman knows that he builds you up by giving you pre-selection and social proof. And it seems like it's like genuine third party, especially when it's from a good looking like friend of his, then it seems like, oh, well, if his friends really like him, then he must be the guy that other guys want to be. And clearly he's good looking. So he must be the guy that other women want to fuck. Bam. There you go. (laughs) Uh, Sancho, uh, integrate game is like playing chess and putting a puzzle together at the same time. Yes. Most men don't have the patience for it. You got to find the moves and put the pieces of what she's saying at the same time, or uh, what she's saying at the same time. I play both since I was three years. Well, good for you. But again, it's it's strategy, right? That's strategy versus attrition. There's two ways to win a war: throw bodies at it and mow over your opponent and your obstacle and your opposition, or learn strategies so you don't waste resources. So you don't see, that's the thing is I don't think enough guys realize that when it comes to, to, to uh, direct game, there's a lot that's risky. A lot of guys don't even know what it is. It takes a lot, by the way, you know, I 100% agree with, with uh, Alan Roger Curry. It takes, a, it takes a lot of guts, first of all, but it takes a lot to learn real direct game. I would argue that you need to know indirect game before you can apply direct game as well as you could. So that you can see the sign, so you can read the girl in the first place to see whether or not she's open to direct game or she's not. So, again, one's not necessarily better than the other. The one girl might call for one, one girl might call for the other. Are you, stri- are you fighting in a, a war of attrition or are you fighting a war of strategy? Same thing. Off topic, so it'll be a quick uh, question, but me and my homie jumped up when you said Warhammer. <laughs> what is your space for in chat? Dude, it would be Odin. It would be easier for me to tell you what armies I don't play. <laughs> um, my, uh, I haven't really gotten into, oh, gosh, okay, geek moment, sorry. Well, here's to your side. I haven't really gotten into ninth edition all that much. 
you'll hear me talk about this on masculine geek when I do that stuff. But, um, I have, I am very happy that they have finally re-released, um, horse heresy because I really enjoyed the horse heresy, which is the, the it's Warhammer 30 K is what it is. Um, and with that, I play blood angels. I play, um, ultramarines cause I like the sort of Roman Legion kind of uh, aspect to them. And, uh, I'm trying to think what else those, I mean, Marines, that's pretty much all I play as far as Marines are concerned. Uh, I'm, not, I'm never really a big Marine. I had Space Wolves for a very long time, but I haven't, I haven't really gotten back to them for, for a while. But uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> they, you brought out the geek moment. Sorry. Awestrike, there's a reason. It's called body count, not something a respectable lady should do. Well, oh man, Jesus Christ. Holy crap. Let me, holy mother of God. I got to go back and get that. Jesus, I did not know that that was a holy mother. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. I got to go back and grab this one because if I don't, I'll be bad. I'm very, very bad. Where did that go? Oh, Iggy, Iggy G just gave me a $500 super chat. Thank you very much. I feel like I'm on fresh and fit. Oh, dude, you are the man, the man, the man. Oh, man. Where did that? Oh, there it is. One more up there. Oh, I don't know what this is, but that's pretty good. What is 1,000? What, what comes down to 1,000? I don't know what is that Mexican pesos. <laughs> Thank you very much. Shout out to the Roller and the Lamb of God. Yes. Have you seen the, have you heard the new album? Yeah, this is some good stuff. They, they're a little political right now, but I really like Lamb of God. I can't wait to see them when they come out. I know Megadeth's on tour with them right now too. That would be good. Oh, and you know, we can have a little game break here in just a second. Let me, um, let me I got to get to the rest of this here. Hold on, hold on. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. I got to get to this one. Where'd it go? Iggy, there it is. Ah, thank you so much, dude. Oh, you get a double one. Yeah. And you get, uh, what else should we give you? How about this? Huh? Thank you. But thank you, Iggy, for my very first $500 super chat. I've never had any kind of, I've never had a super chat that I, that is like fresh and fit level. I very much appreciate that. Next camera coming to you with the courtesy of Iggy. <laughs> thank you very much for that. I appreciate you, man. I much appreciate you. Oh God. Out of the blue. See that maybe now I should just start reading like a uh, $10 and up. <laughs> Uh, just in my 50 something roommate just caught his BPD girlfriend tracking him via Apple air tag underneath uh, his driver's seat. Uh, he won't leave her though. And this has been going on for years. What's your take? Uh, leave her get out now. You don't need that. You, that. you don't need that level of surveillance. Now, why would it got, this is actually a pretty good question. Cause it kind of gets back to what was going on with, uh, with Tate and them. Why would a woman do that? Why would a woman put a, a tracker on, like, be so, like, does that, does that sound insecure? What if a guy did that with his chick? You would go, oh, man, he's so insecure. He must be insecure in his masculinity. How come we don't say, well, uh, your friend implied leader, uh, his girlfriend's insecure. That's like, would that, would that not be? Like, if it was, a, if it was a woman and you put a tracker on her car and she found out about it, would that be like, um. A ban with a bannable offense would that be like a deal breaker? Would that be like you would you break up with that person because of that? Would it would it be all over as a result of that? I would certainly hope so, right? Same thing with this. It's like, why are you doing that? Well, I want to find out where where you're going, what you're doing. Okay, when women do this, it's because women acknowledge that that guy is at least one and possibly two steps above her in sexual market value, and she is trying to she's insecure and she's freaky deaky. Because she doesn't want to lose you as an as a great investment, I and you. I would also say this, dude. Tell him to leave now because if he doesn't, she's probably going to have. She's probably going to lock him down with a accidental pregnancy. Leave now. Get out. Where is it? Here it is. Get out. Get out now. <laughs> That's my advice. Here's my advice. Get out. <laughs> That's what you get. Uh. Why me? Oh, who, who was this? Oh, sorry, I passed by this. Uh, who me? Hey, Rolo, thanks for $5. See, I still, if $500 or $5, I'll still answer your thing. Hey, Rolo, who are the women so averse to being judged or criticized? Uh, both, because they both conflate both of those things together. 
All right. We'll come back to this here in just a second. Since we are at the top of the hour and I keep seeing this come back up, the only thing I happen to watch in the chat when I'm trying to like monologue here. Um, yes, book five is coming out on Audible. Um, and where did it go? Hold on. There it is. You like that? <laughs> Book five, Player's Handbook is coming out on Audible. It should be this week. Uh, I had to, uh, we, no, myself and Trey, the reader, had some technical things that we had to, t- had to uh, sort out. There was a, a few things that we had to do as far as the title and the end page was concerned. We got it kicked back to us twice, so it's out. I believe we're good this time. The uh, cover's with it. It should be uh, coming very, very soon. I, I want to say this week. Um, I gave it to them. I kicked it back to them. I want to say it was while I was sick. You guys don't understand this. I, when I get sick, like I, I like my, my daughter was here and my, my wife is here and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go and get a hotel room and it's cheaper than a freaking hospital. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to snore because when I was sick, I snore and when, I'm just going to go get better as best I can. And, um, and then I'll see you in a few days. And that's basically what I did. And during that time I dealt with audible issues <laughs> and I also uh, dealt with the update for book one as well, which is coming hardback inbound very soon. Uh, that's also what's coming up. So oh, I guess I better put this on there, huh? All right. So Audible, very, very soon, very like within this week, I would say. They usually say anywhere between like, I think it's like seven to 10 days. And I think I I gave it to them on the 6th or the 7th. So it should be next week. That's that's the my my time frame at this point. Is that's the best I can give you. So and Samuel L. Mbika. Uh, I've got a friend, uh, and our mutual friend is smashing his 50 odd year old mother (laughs) and lives on her dime. Okay. Funny as this is, how do we help the brother out? And should we even, should we even, uh, we are all kind of baffled. Um, you're not baffled because the guy's probably like, it's, it's the, geez, what's this? What is this? That's what I meant. (laughs) Love your show. Thank greetings from Argentina, Argentina with 1000 Argentinian, whatever those are super, super rupees. I don't know. Thank you very much. You guys are being very, very generous today. I much appreciate it, especially since this will probably get, (laughs) there's no way this is getting monetized. So anyways, uh, let's get back to the show here. Let's get back to, to checking these things out here. However you're wrong. Uh, She thinks I'm arrogant. I'm being arrogant on purpose. I must admit, annoying her is, is kind of fun. I think that, uh, you know what? I'm being so nice. I'm being so nice to you. I say I think instead of I know. This is him being nice. The answer is I know. I know. Females who sleep with lots of men, first things first, I don't think that women naturally, intrinsically want to do that. I think that's societal programming. Yeah. I think that women... No, but I, I agree. This is what I'm saying to you. Like, there's yeah. things that you're saying, like, I don't disagree with certain things you're saying, but going back to my point, it's like by force, like I, it's to prove a point. It's like this power struggle. Like I personally don't want to sit and sleep with loads of men. I don't care. Like, Good. I don't We're getting to... somewhere. You see, God, Jesus, I'm getting her. Please, little by little, got two hours left. Give me some time. I'll fix it. <laughs> if I want to, then I'm going to. Sorry, but that's where, that's where you need there. to little understand. Little, little, little. <laughs> no, but genuinely, but that's what you need to no, understand. You- Okay, so you got you understand now he's this is play with her and playing with her. So this is the play with her part. You will not. God will frown upon you. You can't do that. And you. Do you mean and me? It doesn't say in the Bible I can't do that. Read the book. I can do whatever I want. I'm a man. Women can't do those things. It's disgusting. I can't believe you're poisoning the youth on YouTube. Why is he shouting? The idea that a woman can sleep with as many people as she wants just because she wants to is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Every man knows it and every woman knows it. Women should not do that. And the whole idea and the whole concept that females can adopt the promiscuity of males, because males have always been promiscuous. But there's actually a lot of men that are like good loyal men, just so you know. Do you think so? Absolutely. Absolutely. I know very good men. Would you, would you deem them high value men? Before she continues, I love this line of rationalization. There are plenty of very good men who are loyal men, right? Yes. Uh, let's see. And I can also show you stats that show about 70% of evangelical Christian men admit to being addicted to porn. Go look at, if you want to talk about like uh, un, men's innate 
sexual strategy is unlimited access to unlimited sexuality. Simple as that. There's no getting around that. That's how it is. Okay. And the funny thing is, is like, there's still this pie in the sky, hopeful Pollyanna, you know, Disney hope. There's still good men that are loyal. And then, yeah, that's not the point. That's the point he's making. That's not the point what whatsoever. It's it's the fact that he's saying, look, it's disgusting. Or he, he's I love how he brings up disgusting is the, is the word, right? Because it's revulsion. It's yeah, the human revulsion response, particularly men. But he's he's playing up to that now. I may or may not be particularly revolted by women who are loose or whatever else. God knows I've got my own past as well. But the thing is, is like there's a human revulsion response and that's what he's playing to right there. And women know that. They understand that. They, that's why they only the only double standard women know is, well, if I sleep with a bunch of guys and I'm a slut, but if you do, you're a superhero. Yeah, because that's the those are the rules of the game. That's how evolution works. A guy who has had sex with a lot of women is the kind of guy that other men want to be and other women want to fuck. Clearly, because he's already fucked up. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Successful. Everything that I listed earlier, 100%. And they don't cheat, right? Yeah. It's possible. <laughs> Why is it funny? <laughs> this, no, seriously, this guy is so toxic. And the only kind of people that listen to his, kind of adv his advice are broke men or heartbroken men that are insecure. I think that... If a man has options over a long enough time frame, he's going to eventually probably explore one of them options. Now, I'm not saying he's going to love another woman. I'm saying that a man who, when a man's in love, he only loves one girl. I agree with that. I believe in love. I believe a man cares about a chick. I believe a man should take care of a woman. I believe he should come home to the same place every day. I believe all those things. However, I think if a man truly has options, truly, that both the man and the woman understand that at some point he's gonna explore those options. No, listen, if, if I'm with you, do you think I'm gonna allow you to explore other options? It's either you're with me or you're not, go go be single then. Cool. Like what, but realistically, what's, what self-respecting woman is gonna sit there and tolerate you I don't cheat, out. I don't and, cheat, okay, I'm a good man, saying, I don't cheat. What woman is going to, if you have all these other options? No, no, no. Because I'll tell you what's more powerful, what's more alpha, yeah. and what's more attractive, and what's more high value, Correct. is a man that can respect his woman yeah, love her, not cheat on her, not disregard her, not see himself above her, not see him as, you know, she's his slave or anything like that. See her as an equal, treat her with respect and put on that. That's more powerful, a partnership, two people. Not, oh, I'm a man, I have options, I'm going to extort them. Listen, if you're a cheater, you're a cheater. If you're a loyal person, you're a loyal person. That's it. First thing. So uh, I, I, will let, I will let Andrew hit this in just a second, but do you see what she is doing there right now? Okay. So, I mean, game wise, he has sort of, he, she's in his frame and she wouldn't be having this. She wouldn't be so fascinated and so locked into him had he not, because you'll see like even later on in the, in the, the, uh, the interview, he has his ups and his down. Why is he shouting? Well, he's, but he's not shouting. He's just like raising his voice. She's not used to a man raising his voice around her. Most women aren't. You want to know why women like have such a problem with like Myron when when he Frank Castle's a girl. Like one of the things I see constantly as a complaint by women uh, against Myron is, oh, he kicks girls off because he doesn't like what they have to say. No, he doesn't. There is not a single instance where Myron has ever kicked a girl off of that show where it has been a because of a difference in opinion or a difference in a take it has always been because of disrespect. It's also because that girl got too drunk or, she, or that girl was mouthing off or it was she was like uh, bringing down the, uh, the the conversation, like bringing down the um, like or like over talking everyone else. I've never seen Myron kick a girl off because it's like, oh, I disagree with you. Get the fuck out. He's never saw, he's never done that. In fact, he looks for those opportunities so that he can address those things. But then when women either castle themselves or they're too many white claws in, or they're too disruptive to the conversation, that's when they get booted off. But we don't want to talk about that. We want to say, well, it's because she doesn't, uh, he doesn't respect her opinion, therefore he kicks him off. No, that's not what's happening here. But that's what the women like to believe is happening here. Well, he can't listen. He can't, he can't uh, address anything I have to say, so he booted me off. Well, what happens is when they start talking about stuff like she is talking about right now and they get it addressed back to them, women don't like to be in those situations. And so what do they do? When they can't win an argument with empiricism, when they can't win an argument by reason, they revert to emotionalism. We'll see that here in a minute. But I got to get to Dark Knight Dev. Here you go, Dark Knight Dev. 
Uh, in earlier videos, you talk about how women are raised to not trust men or have experiences in or have experiences in where they don't trust men. Trust me, is it valid or should it be contested? Uh, so when I talk about women not trusting men, it's a really kind of like this. I, re I usually refer to it in sort of like macro terms, meaning like it's more like a social imperative and has been so for a while. Um, we have developed this narrative that uh, like toxic masculinity, like she just even addressed it here a second ago. Toxic masculinity is really, there's no such thing as toxic masculinity. Just so you know, there is absolutely no thing, no such thing as toxic masculinity. There is only the aspect, there's only masculinity and then there's the aspects of masculinity that it is either convenient or inconvenient to a gynocentric social order, to women's imperatives, to what women are trying to achieve at a particular time. Okay. So I, I've addressed it. I've said that in these terms before. Toxic masculinity, the same thing that makes it toxic like for a guy like, you, know, you ever watch the, the series Jackass, right? The guy goes and does some very dangerous, stupid stunts for yucks and makes money off of it and does, you know, whatever. You know what I'm talking about, those kind of pranks and stuff like fails, fail, ar fail army, <laughs> that kind of stuff. That's the same masculinity that inspires the firemen to run into the burning building and save the baby from, from the burning building. It's the same thing. It's it's masculinity, but it is purposed in such a way that women go, oh, it's toxic. It's toxic because it serves the interest of the man, not the interest of the ma of the woman or the baby in the burning building. It only serves the interest of the man. So when we talk about masculinity and we talk about whether or not it's toxic or it's 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 you know kosher or what I don't even know what they, it's like today it's like just to be masculine is pretty much toxic no matter what because you're a dude and you just don't understand and you should you're mansplaining and you don't have a seat at the table. But the thing is is that the difference between toxic masculinity and whatever kosher masculinity is that it serves a female purpose. And anytime it just serves a male purpose, then it's either stupid or it's ignorant or it's incompetent or it's borderline abusive or he's going to he's going to trade the baby for a six pack and a nudie magazine. Right. That's more or less what it comes down to. So like over the years since really the 70s, we have um We've had as part of our social experiment that is the uh, post sexual revolution generations, um, we have, for whatever reason, installed into the narrative that men are either abusive, they are incompetent, or they're just doofuses, right? They're just like kind of Homer Simpson, like a, a daddy, like the goofy daddy, right? Dr. Huxtable. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dr. Huxtable, Homer Simpson, <clears throat> he's, the, he's the lovable dad who needs mom to save him from himself. Oh, I'll help you, Homer. Right? Or else it's, there, there's no more father knows best. There's no more authority. There's no, you know, men had a responsibility, but they also had masculine authority. But now all bets are off and that shit's out the window. So you can either, you get these choices, men. You get to be an abusive asshole or like a potential abusive asshole, or you get to be incompetent in the sense that you can't change a flat tire and you can't tie a tie, a necktie or drive a stick shift because you're just, and that's usually reserved for like Gen Z. <laughs> and then there's the, uh, then there's the goofus daddy who's really been around since like the, the boomer generation, right? So if those are the, if that's the, the choices that you get to, to choose from, ladies and you've been taught that by disney and pixar for god knows how long yeah man I, I completely understand it so should you be able to contest that yeah i should ho certainly hope that you would contest that and that's exactly what tate is trying to do here in a in kind of a roundabout sense it's like why is it that your reality trumps mine i'm a man this is my this is my you know, manifestation of masculinity. This is what I say. I'm a high value guy. I've got to where I'm at. I'm good looking. I'm 30 some odd years old. Was he 34? I, I'm, I'm 30 some odd years old. Good looking. Got to drive supercars. I make a lot of money. Women want to, I'm the guy that other men want to be and other women want to bank. And because I'm on here, I don't have to listen. I'm, I'm, I'm my second nature. The way that I am, my real personality is what, what you see is what you get. And I'm, I'm unapologetically masculine about it because his game is on point, his physique is on point, his money is on point. He can say whatever the fuck he wants. He is not abusive, he is not incompetent, and he's most definitely not doofy dad, okay? So when that guy walks onto your soundstage, and, as he did, 
and he uh, you know asserts his frame for her it's very offensive not because it's toxic masculinity it is forcing her into re in relating to him in his frame and to do so she must surrender her personality her ego investments to even consider to ask questions of this guy right she can't combat this guy without saying you're legit what you're doing what you're doing for for her to even have this conversation with the guy he's, he's not trying to pander to her he doesn't care one way or another he's gonna he's not going home and banging this girl I hope not. <laughs> he's not going, he has no, no, he's not entertaining any idea of having sex with this chick. And she's not probably not going to bang him either. Right. Well, the fact remains is like, he's an unapologetic. He's a, a rare animal. Maybe you could go onto the female delusion calculator. We could type in all the great stuff of that. Andrew, I bet he is like 0. 0.0001.25% of the population on planet earth to say nothing of, you know, the United States or Romania or whatever else. Right. So, She's got to address him in his frame and she's relying on her ego invested belief sets and her ideologies and what she thinks, what all of those things, all that belief sets that she's eager to invest herself in that have created her personality. He's not just an affront to them. He's an affront to her personality that has been molded and developed by those, by those social cues and those social dynamics, which is exactly what was it? dark, dark night. This is that. Yeah. Dark night. Dev was just talking about. Should you, should, no, don't validate that. You move, you either, you can either, like, here's the thing, guys, when you're in a situation, whether you're using game, direct game or indirect game, whatever, the first thing out of your, into your head for should be, well, what does this girl do for me? What is this? What is this about? Why am I trying to like build? You'll notice that like when you look at like old school guys, if you look at like, say, Jordan, the Jordan Petersons of the world, or even David Buss will even will fall in line with this. Matt Walsh, definitely. I'm about to get into Jedediah to be like, we would just look at Jedediah's thing here. And we'll talk about this again. But you, you come into this awareness that you are not in your frame. You're always in a female frame. Guys, this is your duty. This is your responsibility. And we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys should be appreciated for opening doors. Chivalry's not dead, right? All that kind of stuff. All of that as, as, as quaint and let's swing the pendulum back the other way, as quaint as that is, first of all, it's not happening. And then second of all, do you not realize that the conversation the advice, the ideas that are being push, pushed out there are only pushed out there because they are already in a gynocentric framework. When Tate comes on this show and he and and we're they're having this back and forth, okay, he is already presuming this conversation takes place in my reality and you want to enter my reality. How much different is that from, let's say, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh, I, I kicked it off, but now I got to put it back in. How much different is that, say, from this? You need to start paying attention to the good guys. They'll come up to you more. You need to stop rewarding the bad boys. Okay, because it's in your frame. The world is in your frame, ladies. You need to teach them. So here's some advice. Don't put the goods out there unless someone earns it. Okay, let them qualify. Well, when a guy like Tate comes in and he qualifies for it in spades, then what are you going to do? By earn it, I mean they have to be invested in you. They have to take you out on dates. They have to call you. They have to call you. Follow you on Instagram. Prioritize um, you. They have to make you feel good. Maybe they open the car door for you. Imagine that. Something right out of 1985. Okay. All of this gynocentric framework. The overall social narrative is, got, is a gynocentric framework. Men are already operating from within that framework. Maybe they pay for your dinner. <gasps> Maybe they call you, make sure, oh, hey, how did it go? Yeah, I had a really good time. Pick up the phone, not a text, not 2022. Who is she talking to, women or men? See, when she started this out, she's talking to, to girls. Hey, don't reward these guys for not doing all these things that they should do. Let me list them for you. Gentlemanly. They treat you with respect. You feel good about that situation. All that needs to happen before you put the goods out there. What, you are, what are those goods, Jedediah? Exactly what would those goods be? The goods that other guys already 
got in college and the foam cannon party and spring break in Cancun. <laughs> Those goods? <laughs> what are the good? What, what, what? Show me the goods. <laughs> show me the goods. I can make a t-shirt out of that. Maybe we should do that one. What did you, what did you say? Uh, would have loved to see you and Myron debate her on FNF after hours show. Who? Uh, uh, Sharon? 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 Sean? Sean? Sean, Ren, Sean, Sean, can we just call her Sean? Like, stop spelling your name like a hooker. Stop spelling your name like a, a stripper. It's not Cindy with a C-I-N-D-I. -I. Any any girl with, by the way, you want a stripper name? Here's how, how you can tell a stripper name. Any girl that spells her name that should end in Y, but they spell with a I. Cindy with an I at the end. Or uh, let's see, Candy, C-A-N-D-I. That's a stripper. <laughs> Any girl who is named after a perfume, right? Like Destiny, <laughs> Chantal, <laughs> stripper. Uh, any girl that is named after a major city like uh, Cheyenne, Dallas, Houston. Um, I'm trying to think of like what, what, what's another good stripper name? Like that's you know, like those pretty, those are, those are guys. Those are, I'm not saying those are red flags. I'm just saying Chantal, uh, what's another, what's another, what's another, uh, perfume name that we could think of here. That would be a good one. Cindy Marnie. Yeah. 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 That's, I don't know. Is Marnie like, would you necessarily spell that Charlotte? Would you necessarily spell Marnie with a Y? I don't think so. All right. Let's put this back in here. Men and women are not equal. We'll talk about that in a second. Secondly, is that if a woman sees a, if sees Chris Brown in the club, do you think she's like, wow, he'll be loyal? Fuck no. She doesn't care. Like, at high enough status as a man, women don't even care about loyalty. Women don't even care about loyalty at high enough status. I'm not, and I don't cheat. Okay, Listen, no, I'm a man of God. I go to church. I don't cheat. I'm talking about in general. Okay, We're talking but I'm, about what I'm trying to explain to you, though, because maybe your perception of what a high value woman is, is what? because I'm a high value woman, I make my own money, I possess all the qualities that I listed earlier, right? I believe I'm not gonna be with a man that's gonna cheat. I'm not gonna look at a man like Chris Brown and be like, oh my God, like he's loyal. It, you, see, you see it as face value, you know he's a cheat, and maybe he'd just be a one night guy. Cool. Just like you men do it to Would you sleep with him for one night? Him. I don't think I would. I hope not, because that would no, not make you a one no, value, I, well, not no, high value woman. Saying, because <laughs> <laughs> see who's in control of making her a high value woman? He, did you see how the like, verbal jujitsu right there? Now, here's the other thing, and you guys have already picked up on this, of course, is that, you know, I'm a high value woman. I have my own money. I got my own show. Like, again, you've become the man that you wanted to marry. That's the problem. She'll go. I, I love it how, like, women will say, well, of course, men and women are different, right? Okay. Well, if that's the case, then you have to accept the fact that you have turned yourself into that or, or a, a facsimile of, a substitute of, a counterfeit of. A man, the things that you find value, the things that you think make you an alpha female are the things that make an, a man alpha female. They don't say what they make a woman, a high value woman. He tried to explain this to her, you know, loyalty, femininity, sexuality, uh, fertility, youth, beauty, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's a, lot, there's a lot of things that women do not want to accept that. Why do they not want to accept that? Because they conflate personal worth with sexual market value, which for women is perishable. That's why the pro again, the reason why she has even has this show is because of FOMO, fear of missing out. It is uh, the it is the idea promoting the idea. And you want to talk? We were talking about like uh, what was it? Uh, King King Dev was just talking about like um, how, why why women don't trust men. They don't trust men because they. Well, you want to know why you got alpha females like this? Is because they don't trust men. We've inculcated this into it's a it's social engineering is what it is. We've inculcated this like no big word. Go look it up that vocabulary word for that. We have embedded this into the social fabric for women. Don't trust men, and if you can't trust men for provisioning, protection, and parental investment, then you've got to you've got to put it out there for yourself. You got to create it and generate it for yourself. How do you do that? Become an alpha female. Right? Because I make my own money. I don't need a man. I want a man. I, okay. Well, what kind of man do you want? I want the guy who's going to be like loyal and only be, but the thing is I, you're expecting this high value guy who doesn't want to have anything to do with you because to his hindbrain, you look like a man. You are a man. He had the muffer for the most part, heterosexual men don't want to get with other men, other men. They don't want to marry other men. 
they're not attracted to other men. They're attracted to the female. They're attracted to the opposite of them, which you are not. How many different ways does it have to be told to how many different show hosts to 6 million people? How many times does this have to, does this conversation have to take place? Because I, th this is the same conversation I'll, I would probably have with Jedediah. I would probably have, I, I certainly had with Leah, Leah Halpern. I had it with, uh, with Maz. I've had it with uh, Sydney Watson. I've had this with every chick that's ever been on SauceCast. Hell, I had it with, with, um, with uh, Patrick Bet David in February. Every single time. It's the same thing. It's the same conversation. And it's the same miss understanding about their own value. I'm sure that you're a great person. I'm sure you make, she probably makes more money than I do, right? I make a good chunk of change. She's got her own show. She's got her own platform. She's very popular. Awesome. You would make a great man. You would make a great dude. I'm sure you could be the kind of guy that other men want to be and maybe other women want to bang, right? But she's not. She's female. She'll, she'll acknowledge the differences between men and women, but then not acknowledge the fact that she looks very much like the different man that she's describing. So she can't get, she can't get out of a, a conversation. Uh, she and many other women can't get out of that, right? I should say, high value with a kid at 30. Mm, now she's 33, actually. It's like when you hold yourself in high regard, you don't need to do those things. So the kind of caliber of women that go for men like that and these opportunities don't have that much self-worth because it's what you're going to go with a man that's only deep, like only values you for one night. So it says a lot about the quality of a woman. All right, so, so we so agree so on saying, something. But I'm saying, so when you generalize about women, don't do that because there are many high value women who would refuse him. That will She's turning into mom now. She's trying to scold him. Watch how he, watch what he does with this. Not tolerate that. Completely. I'm not saying that. My point is you completely misunderstand me. I'm saying at a certain point, females aren't even interested in loyalty. Do you think people, do you think all the girls with Dan Bilzerian think he's loyal? I'm not saying every girl will go with him. I'm saying there are certain girls at a certain level of male achievement who are not interested in loyalty. But is that attractive? Like for me personally, that's not attractive to sit there Good. and see a man that thinks it's cool to have loads of women around him be it. like oh my god they're bitches this is that i have all this money that doesn't impress me that doesn't impress a lot of women it's about raising a family it's about unity and stuff. okay it is now because where she is in life oh that's she wants to marry captain america she wants to marry superman she wants to marry the pro-social alpha who is the guy that knocked her up can somebody figure out who it was that like who did she have the baby with because I would argue that the guy, I don't know how old the kid is, whatever. She's 33. She's a single mother. I would argue, I would suspect anyways, that the guy that knocked her up was a guy like, just like Dan Bilzerian, just like that. Or, or I mean, a scoundrel, right? He, he's the scoundrel alpha. He's the guy, he's a, he, he, Tony Stark knocked her up. Gangster knocks her. Uh, August Alsina <laughs> knocked her up. Okay. What about, I wonder what she would say. I, I don't know. I don't think they said anything about this. I wonder what she would say. What, what her estimate of Jada Pinkett Smith is. Is she low value? Is she, is she low, low self-esteem? Does she have esteem problems because she cheated on Will Smith to go and bang 20 some odd year old uh, August Alsina? Would, what would, would that be a, would that, would that figure into the, the accountability? Because I doubt it because she like, if you go and you look at Jada Pinkett Smith, she probably thinks very, very highly of herself. She's got her own show, makes lots and lots of money. She's a top tier actress. Well, it used to be a top tier actress, B list or maybe, but what would, would she say that uh, Jada Pinkett Smith is a low quality woman? Because that's essentially what she just described. What is this? Thank you very, very much for your, uh, wait, wait, oh, here we go. Thank you very much. Can I be in charge for a while? Hey, Rola, I took the red pill four months ago. I discovered I was attracted to women discovered. Dumped my ex and, uh, and some girls. I met a girl, 10 of 10. There's no such thing as a 10. Uh, virgin, really. Uh, like uh, that, I like a lot. I'm sick of spinning plates. Uh, is now 26 is 26 too young to go back to monogamy you mean you 26 or she's 26 don't don't even think about it like guys don't do i have to repeat this again don't even consider monogamy until you're 30 years old and i mean don't consider marriage period end of story but don't 
And if you do get married and you have some religious convictions, I say that you have to get married so you can have sex. Well, then maybe you want to think about those things, but you've also got to be red pill and red pill aware and understand your nature and women's nature, blah, blah, blah. I talk about the go pick up religion, my fourth book, the rational male religion. I talk about that all the time in there. Uh, however, to get, I'm not giving you permission. You give yourself permission to decide what it is that you want to do. You're 26 and she's 18. I would absolutely say no, don't do it. As a man, I would say no. For her, I still think that's too young. I think a woman should get married right around 23, 22, 23, so she can maximize her. I mean, let's just go from a pragmatic sense, okay? Um, women, I think women should ought to get around 23, maybe 24, like right around the peak years, a little bit later than that, but you know, 23, 24. And then um, and men should be older. My men should definitely be like if you're if that is your conviction if you're like okay it's you know it's <laughs> if i have sex before marriage okay well if that's the case then it, remember it takes longer for men to mature into their peak potential and if for whatever reason you're 28 years old 26 and she's say she's 20 it's i think 18 is way too young but <clears throat> she's 20 22 like you're 26 she's 22 you need to go if if that's the case, and you're like, okay, I'm never gonna find a hotter chick than this. And she's a she's a virgin. She loves me to death. We're gonna have babies together. Great, good for you. You're an anomaly, but also remember that going forward, you are put. You're essentially sacrificing your peak potential for her. If she does not appreciate that, don't get married. End of story. Uh, that doesn't impress them when they are 27. I've been seeing signs everywhere. They get mad when you're 30 and single because they know men burn slower. Yes, they do. And once you uh, once you see red, yeah, exactly. Which is why she's like this right now, by the way. I've mentioned this like in the second book, in preventive medicine. And in the timeline, when I talk about like 18 to 28, right around the, that span, that's what I call the party years. Like ladies, you call it the hoe phase. Okay, good for you. Um, but then right around 29 to 31 years old, that's what I call the epiphany phase. And that's when women go, oh, okay, and you get right with God. That's when she starts adopting the ideas that she has right now. I would be, I would not be surprised if the guy that she has a baby with was not anything like who she's describing right now. And she's like, well, women want this women. Yeah. Women of 33 with a kid definitely do. The girls on Fresh and Fit or that age or that demographic, like she's way out of that demographic. She is 10 years past that demographic. She is not the same. Like, remember when I tell you guys, like when a woman hits the wall is when she realizes that the 33-year-old version of her can never compete with the 23-year-old version of her. Like she's like, well, I made a lot of myself. I've become, you know, successful. Good. But that has nothing to do with your sexual market value. That is nothing what your value is to men. Stop, ladies. Ladies, can we talk? Can we talk? <laughs> Joan Rivers, can we talk? Ladies, your value, your personal worth is not necessarily attached to your sexual market value. Okay. You can be a great, you can be Mother Teresa. You can be a great individual. You can be a, the most humanitarian individual in the world. You could save lost children. And I'll tell you this, that's not going to have any, you, you could make, you could be, you could be Sheryl Sandberg, God forbid. You could be Sheryl Sandberg. You could be, I hate to use her because she's a bad, suddenly she's a bad example now, but if you, you could be a high-powered CEO chick and it has absolutely no bearing on whether or not a guy wants to fuck you. Like, Do you not understand that? I mean, your, your 23-year-old self, you're 33, right? Your 23-year-old self understands that. Your 33-year-old self goes, oh, why would that be? How come, where's my man at 38 years old? Because, and I'm not saying it's all over for you or whatever else. I see you just need to recognize. You need to, you need to unlearn that what you've learned. I would tell the same thing to guys too. I want to unplug women just as much as I want to unplug men. It's, that's the blue pill. The blue pill for women is this idea that they have to be a, a man, the man that they want to marry, they have to be, they have to provide their own security in the long term. And then because of that, the women, men are just going to want to just say, oh, well, I guess she makes, you know, six figures and she's a, she's really on top of her game. And I, boy, it makes my dick hard. No, no, it doesn't. No, you have to get like, I, I, I once again, ladies, 
how do I get, how do I, how do I get the right guy? What's wrong with, how come guys aren't forthcoming? Rollo, how come, get into, do what you've been telling men since the seventies, get in touch with your feminine side, ladies, get in touch, express yourself emotionally, do something that makes you feminine, right? You've been telling guys, we've been telling guys that since the early 70s. You know, if you just got in touch with your anima animus, if you just got in touch with your feminine side, then ladies, you if you are the man that you want to marry, guess what? No heterosexual dude wants to marry a dude. Got it? Okay. I don't care how successful you are. I don't care how well established you are. I don't care if you're the CEO or CFO, COO of Facebook. That is in no way going to be an arousal component. That is not Spanish fly <laughs> for the guy. That does not pass the boner test. Okay. Femininity, sexuality. I like how, how simple, how much more simple does that have to be? Why? Oops. Put your Everything back. that you were saying that it, it's not that. I'm talking about all these celebrities X, Y, Z, at a high enough value, when they have options, they will explore them. That's what I'm saying. And I'm also saying that if a man did decide to explore his options, it would not be as disgusting as if a female decided to explore okay, options. Okay, wouldn't it just be disgusting then? No. It's different if so a woman no, does it. So it's different if a woman does it. Everyone watching this knows it's different if a woman cheats. It's Maybe. different. Honestly, men with these sexist views, like, it's so outdated. What kind of relationship do you have with your mother? A good one. See, there it is. There it is. You catch that? I can't win with this. I don't have no counter argument. What's your mother like? That is exactly, exact. do you see what just happened, right? You did, you did catch that. That is, that I just thought, oh, what's your relationship with your mother like? which is funny because he's got a great relationship with his mom. Right. Um, but that you, you'll notice by the way, to the fucking letter, almost verbatim is exactly what was said to Myron when Myron and fresh were on sauce cast with those girls. Have you ever been in love before? What's your relationship with your family? Like with your, yeah, like, where are you tight with your family kind of thing? Like your mom, your dad, my, he had fresh, uh, it was funny because I knew this for a fact at the time is Myron had just like gone and visited his parents and he's like, great, man. So we have a, we have an awesome relationship, but the reframe is always from the empirical, from the rational to the emotional. That's why women suddenly become certified clinical psychologists when they step on top of it. And when they step into any arena where they're being put on the point on the spot, to justify their belief set, their ego invested beliefs. That's what she does. That's the reframing. Yeah, you can call it shaming language, but it's more than that, brother. It's more than that, though. You're right. You're true, but it's more than that. Because what it is, is it's a reef. I can't win this argument because I have nothing else. I have no other counter argument to this. So therefore, who hurt you? I can't win a rational argument. So therefore we're going to turn this, we're going to set, we're going to move the goalposts and we're going to make the winning move be an emotional move rather than a rational move. And she's like, well, he's just, yeah. but of course it's these creative edits. I'm sure there's probably a lot more. Yes, it is. What class it is emotionalism. That's what it is. Okay. I'm glad you picked up on it. Thank you. You're, you go to the front of the class, my friend, you go to the front Hello of the there, class. Children. How's it going? Yes, that is emotionalism 101. If you cannot win rational terms, if you cannot turn the argument and turn the goal or turn the goals of the argument into an emotional goal that you can win. What's your, what's your, uh, <laughs> you know, fun. I don't know what he's going to say here because I, I, I forgot what he's going to go, go into. But say, Who hurt you? What's your, what's your, what's your relationship with your mom like? Do you hurt animals? When's the last time you hurt animals? Um, let's see. Uh, have you ever been in love? <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that the goal of the argument? And by the way, Myron, like a freaking, like a pimp, like turn that around perfectly at that on that one too. Right. Whenever. And by the way, so that should be a lesson for you class. Since we're talking about game, like top, top G game, here's the top G game. Always call that out. So what's the, uh, What's their relationship with your mom like? Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Freud. Uh, are you, did you suddenly get a psychology degree? 
Or, or am I the one that's on the fainting couch right now? Like, I mean, there are very few times like that I would say break character and like be, you know, use rationalism or like talk about like um, when, when guys say, should I talk about the red pill? No, not especially not with a girl that you actually have any intention of getting, you know, having intimacy with, let's just say. Um, but I mean, that's a kiss of death because that's, that's what gammas do, right? They make lists, but or they, or they, I should say this, what gammas do is they insist on not playing the game. Right, they they play the game and pl play with her and play with her. Right, so now what she's doing, she's saying, okay, I can't win this on rational terms. This guy's got to, I got no counter argument. So who hurt you? Well, what what's your relationship like with your mom? Because it, what she's expecting to hear is like some sort of confession of like, oh, me and my mom, my mom left when I was nine years old, and she used to beat me with a switch. You know, I, you know, oh, okay, because they want to find some way to sort of justify like how you came. To your incorrect thinking, your toxic, toxic thinking about how the relationship between men and women are. She has no counter argument, so she can only go and look for the deep seated root because she's presuming the point. Remember what I said before in a gynocentric social order, it's a female correct society. Anything that works for the female, like I said, toxic masculinity, any aspect of masculinity that doesn't work with. Uh, the gynocentric imperative, you know, women's interests, let's just say anything that doesn't, then that's toxic, right? And if it is toxic and it makes sense, then it only makes sense because the guy's damaged. So let's find out. Are you, is it toxicity because mom beat you with the switch? I don't know. Thank you. Rational male bitter pill broke up with a 37 year old girlfriend. How old are you? Uh, two years because she lied about talking to beta orbiter. Uh, was about to move her in, but uh, has body dysmorphia, uh, struggling to let it go. Okay, well, just let it go. You know what, man? Spin. Well, you want to know what the cure is? Spin more plates. That's the cure, deadliest catch. Here's the thing. And the other thing is, appreciate the fact that you probably dodged a bullet, okay? As I said, and you're doing it, by the way, deadliest catch, you know what? You get, uh, what, do I, what do I want to give you? You get a good one. How about... Um, um, ain't nobody, got time, ain't nobody got time for her shit. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. Good for you. I'm glad you did what you did. And you should be okay with that as well. And the reason I say that is because you have established, you had established boundaries. She crossed those boundaries and she learned the price of those boundaries. Okay. Just let it go and spin more plates. That's the, that's your cure. And we're not going, I'm sorry, love chat X, but we can't have you in the chat. That was only, that was two shows ago. You could be on for that one, but you couldn't be on for this one. All right. I don't do spam on this one. It's too much. Okay. Now she's tried to reframe. Here we go. What's the counter? Yeah, I take care of her. And, and, and also that paradigm, the whole idea that if you find a man who's good with his mom, then he's good with girls. That's, that's, that's bullshit. No, no. It was just more because I find that your thoughts towards women are quite disrespectful. You think so? so? Why? This arrogance that you've got. Don't tell me what I, I'd actually like to know what I've said that so far. No, I'm so just saying it's it's not you don't have to say anything. It's like you notice the presumption here. The presumption is that he must have a bad relationship with his mom to be who he is. That's an like I'm surprised Tate didn't let like go off on her because that's to, to me that's an insult. That's what it is. So you're saying that I come to these conclusions because my mom fucked up. Is that what you're saying? Because my mom wasn't a, wasn't a didn't raise me. What about my dad, for that matter? Right? She doesn't. You know, she doesn't ask about the dad. She always talks. She asks about the mom. She didn't start with dad. At least the girl on on Saucecast who came at Myron said, "What is what's your relationship with your family like?" Because the presumption is that the only way that a guy could go against the female imperative, the 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 common correct way of thinking, is if he was damaged. That started when he was a little boy and mommy did. Oh, did mommy love you enough? I'm surprised she didn't say that. Right. And I've, if I was Tate, I would, by the way, Tate, if you're watching this, and I'm sure you will at this point right here, you should have gone off on her. Like, how dare you? How dare you insult my mother like that? How dare you insult me like that? How about this? I came to these conclusions on my own through lived experience, through doing what I am to become who I am. That's how I am. And just because you think that you are correct because you live in a gynocentric social order. You were the product of a social order that has mollycoddled you from day one. 
very fact that you have this wonderful studio and this show and everything else is because men built it and put the platform of made it available for you to empower you in the first place. Just because you think that you live in a correct paradigm and that you don't have any counter argument to me, how dare you? How no, we don't have it up. <laughs> how dare you? I would be I would be pissed. How dare you talk? How dare you insult my mother like that? That's what I would say. Energy speaks volumes because you're actually listening to what I'm saying. I'm listening to everything you're saying. I don't think you're listening to what I'm saying. I'm saying women shouldn't sleep with lots of men and they should fall in love with one man and stay with that man. And if that man takes okay. care of them and ends up across 20 years sleeping with one chick once, you shouldn't leave him. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And the point I'm making is completely valid. And if a woman sleeps with one man once, that's unacceptable. What, if a man does it, it's, it's acceptable. That's the point I'm making. Do you, do you just want women to be submissive to you? I think in a healthy relationship, there's always a leader whether it's the man or the woman. And I think that in the happiest relationships, the man's in charge. I don't think women should be submissive to an idiot. Yeah. And I don't think women should be submissive to any man they meet. And I don't think women should be submissive when they're not rewarded. Right? If, if a captain is in charge of a ship, he's responsible for the ship, right? Mm -hmm. If he's responsible for the ship, he has authority over the ship. Okay, he, but he, it's a, I'm a woman, I'm not a ship. In a relationship, so. okay, the ship is a relationship. I know exactly what this guy's doing. He's just like talking in riddles. Like none of it actually makes sense if you actually listen to what he's saying. So I think if a man... No, it makes complete sense. That's the problem. It doesn't make sense when your goal state is to win an emotional argument. That's why it seems like he's speaking Swahili, right? He's speaking Chinese to her. Literally. I mean, she just admits this right now. She doesn't... Hey, he's just talking gibberish. No, he's not. And you he, you know he's not. And six million people know he's not. And you look like much b a bigger fool for it by saying exactly that, by saying, oh, he's not making any sense. No, he's making perfect sense from an empirical, rational perspective. And you are making zero sense from an emotional perspective. What we're having here is a, this conversation is the reason they're talking past each other and, and like on these little side notes, you know, little side you know, interviews is because they are using different languages. She's using the language of emotionalism. He's using the language of reason. And it started out really good because he was gaming her per perfectly and maybe he'll swing this back around. So we'll see. Has responsibility and he takes care of the woman. Here we go. Improves her life and makes sure that every single facet of her life, whether spiritual, physical, financial, etc., is taken care of, then he should have some degree of authority. I don't see why a man would take care of a woman and have no authority over her while accepting all of the responsibility that's getting played. You're an independent woman. Maybe you make your own money, you want to do all those other things. That's fine, fantastic. But if if I had a woman, I would say, look, I like that you do your own things, I like that you do your jobs, but let's keep it part-time. I want you to come with me. We gotta go here, we gotta go there. I'm taking you around the world with me i'm taking care of you etc and i'd expect her to listen to me in return why wouldn't she i'm not going to do anything wrong or bad but if i were to say i don't like that dude stop talking to him i'm her man not that dude it shouldn't even be a competition it should be all right cool block mm. well, why wouldn't it be but then if i said i didn't like that woman i don't know about that this is what i'm saying it's just a double standard and it's just like a power struggle like it's about balance life you know and this is the thing like i feel a lot of women could give you that life and be like, you know what? He can have a girlfriend, he can... There's so many people that are into that. I'm not even saying, no, I'm not no, a cheater. No, but I'm saying there's people that are into that. Correct, but, but I'm not a cheater. I don't but, want anyone to think this is about me. I'm talking women, about in general. But do you think women want to sit here and look stupid? Like, I, I might think, do you know what? Actually, I'm listening to everything you're saying. I'm agreeing and I'm liking it. But then if you've got me out here looking stupid because you might be in clubs with all these women around you making me look like a f idiot, do you think I'm going to tolerate that? No, when you have men like, you have explained, it's as if you're trying to prove a point to the world that you're yeah. this great man that has all these options no, and I you're agree. so successful. I agree like with it you. Doesn't I wonder what she would say to the question or to the, when we've talked about this in the past, I wonder what she would say if, uh, I don't know if this happens in here or not, I kind of am going to have to cut it short here in a little bit because I don't want to get too far over, uh, which is t a damn shame because this has been a really good show so far. Um, I wonder what she would say if Andrew said, well, what if I told you this? Uh, I'm, I'm you, fine. I, I agree to your, your, your terms are acceptable. Here's my terms, my counter terms. Dump your Instagram. Okay. I will, I'll tell you what, forsaking all, that's a marriage vow, right? Forsaking all others. I understand where she's coming from, right? She's like, I don't want, I don't want you, I don't want to feel like I'm being disrespected because I am putting my time, my energy, my investment, my effort. I'm giving up part of my sexual you know strategy my mating strategy my life strategy to afford you 
with the appreciation that you deserve because you're a high high value man and everything else. And I know you could you're you're the kind of guy who could cheat, right? But I'll tell you what, you don't cheat. Okay, great. And you don't want to be feel disrespected. Great, one hundred percent. That I, I I can get behind all of that. I understand why she would feel the way she is because she's she's really it's really about social approval at that point. So I, well, I don't want my girlfriends to think I'm an idiot or think I am. Like here's her biggest concern is not the fact that he's he's out there banging other girls. It's the fact that other women in her social circle would know that her husband is out banging other girls. That's why her main main concern isn't necessarily about him having a side piece. As long as he's invested in her, it's the fact that other women in her social circle would think less of her. That's solipsism 101. Go look it up. I put it, it's in, uh, let's see, it's in, uh, I want to say it's in, oh no, it's in it's the second book, Preventive Medicine. Solipsism, there's actually two chapters on it in there. That's innate solipsism. Now, what would happen if he said, okay, fine, I agree to your terms. You eliminate and erase your Instagram if that's the case. I'll tell you what, I will forsake all, you know, till death do us part, sickness and health, rich or poor, forsaking all others. Tell you what, you you got me. I will not go cheat on you, even though I could. And you acknowledge and understand that I'm high value enough that I could. Here's my other, here's my counter terms. Give up your Instagram. Do you think she would do that? Do you th- give up your OnlyFans? Give up your your social media presence? Give up all of that. And you know what she would say? I'm not going to do that. Because I don't know if you're going to turn into an abusive prick, right? I heard this yesterday on Pearl's show on, on Pearly Things, or whatever. I know, what, what is she calling it? I don't even know what the title is anymore. Pearl, like stick to one title. Brand manager. Um, I heard some chick on there was talking about like, well, I need to make my own money because you never know if the guy's going to turn into a bum. You never know if the guy's going to turn into a cheater. You never know if you're going to get he's going to go and you know run off with the trophy wife and the secretary, right? That's always the fear. That is, and it's not a fear. But women don't fear that. Most women don't fear that. You know what they fear? They fear looking like an idiot. First of all, second, yeah. Second of all, is it's it's a cope. It's a cope for not wanting to give up any kind of authority, not giving up anything because they have lived a lifetime of being taught that they can't. You can't. No man. Every man is untrustworthy. You cannot. You never trust a man. Right. That's the whole thing. They will not do that. That's why I kept saying, you know, like what, like Rich Cooper has asked me before, how do you vet? How did you vet your wife? Right. Well, she's got to trust you with her life. Literally has to trust you with her life. If a woman cannot trust you with her life, then how can she trust? How can you trust me with a kid? (laughs) How can you trust me with uh, my finances? How can you trust me with the direction of this family? If you can't trust me with your life, then then what's the point? Can you get in? Can I pack you a parachute and we can go skydiving for the first time? And will you trust me? Will you pull the ripcord and know that it's going to come out just perfectly and you're going to be hundred percent safe. Can you do that? Can, can any woman actually even say that about the guy that she's with right now? Even guys that they've been married to for 10 years, probably not. Most men, most women have been taught over the course of really the last 65 some odd years, never trust a man. You cannot trust men because if you do, the minute you do is when they're going to get a trophy bride. The minute you do is when they're going to fuck you over. The minute you do is when all of that investment, all the capital that you invested in him and in the in his potential, and he betrays all of that capital and you're screwed like that right there, man, you want to make a million bucks fear of missing out and that, and, and find some way to pander to women's fear of missing out and also pander to the uh, the idea, the fantasy that their sexual market value is evergreen. That it can, it'll never, it's never, it's imperishable. It will never go bad. It will never spoil. If you can do that, if you can find ways to do that, and you will notice that the most successful products sold to women rely on those two things. Fear of missing out and that their sexual market value will be evergreen. Cosme- the cosmetic industry that is a juggernaut because of selling the idea that they, they women have more time than they actually do in the sexual marketplace. That's why they make money. Egg freezing, same thing. Abortion passports, same thing. You want to know why women are losing their minds over abortion right now? The same thing. They want those fail safes because you can't trust a man. Never trust a man. Never, 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 never. And that's why, and she's at a point right now where she's built her entire personality and her entire ego is invested in the idea that she can never trust a man with her life. She's already had the kid. What's what else is there? Right. And you know what she'll do? She'll go and she'll put that fear into the baby 
as well into the kid if, if it hasn't already happened, right? Well, you need to go out there and do it yourself, girl, because if you don't, you can't trust and rely on any man. That's why whenever you hear women who like, like, uh, like I think Pearl made this question and I've heard this come up in other quote unquote girly red pill shows, right? It's like, um, should a woman like submit to a man? And the, it, I think women sort of great on the word submission because they think of it as like, should a woman be a slave to a man? Why, why don't you just say that? I mean, it's like neurolinguistic programming, right? Should she be the, the footstool of a man? Should she be the groveling, bootlicking toady of a man? That's, that's what you are. As a wife, wives, wives, you're just bootlicking toadies. You don't think for yourselves, you're a wife. Is that true? Because that's really, I mean, that's the extreme that they go to so much so that they won't trust. They won't even the idea. Like, that's why I keep, I'm trying to use the word defer. Like she's like, oh, well, men and women should be equal. Well, uh, this is what I would tell Sean. Sean is that a woman cannot look up to a man who is her equal. She cannot do that. Women want a guy who makes more money than they are, who's taller than they are, who is better, you know, is, 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 what is, I'm going to, you know, who was it? Uh, Patrice O'Neill, you know, once, once, uh, you know, more, makes more money, more educated, funnier, more invested in the family, taller, stronger, broader, blah, blah, like, like better, 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 better. Any she, women want a man, a man who is better than any woman, but still is stupid enough to think of himself as her equal. And you know what's funny is that incongruency is exact. I don't care if you're like the king high shit. Yeah, you would be the tall G. If you don't have the fucking mentality that says, you know what, I'm the prize, then yeah, you're not above her. You thought, well, I'm imagine this. Imagine Andrew Tate saying, you know what? You're right. I'll tell you what, we're gonna get married, and I promise I'll play even Steven. I will you you will we'll make all we'll make the same decisions together all the time. Right? You know, nobody's above anybody else, even though I make you know, countless more millions than you do. I'm much more, you know, successful than you are. I've got my own private jet. Women want to just, you know, throw their panties on stage for me. But you know what? Don't forget about all that. I'm going to be your equal. I'll bust myself down so that I can be your equal. Do you think that that would be genuine? Do you think she would think that that's an authentic, that's his authentic personality? Probably not. Do you think she would be attracted to that? Definitely not. Women want somebody who's better than they are. They're looking for the be bigger and better deal. They don't want a lateral move in hypergamy. They want to move up. That's the whole point. And if it is a lateral move, you better damn well bring something extra to the table. You better have value added. I, mean, I don't know how many times I got to like present that one again. Keep going, love chat. You're going to get blocked every single time. See, I let you in. I gave you, I get three a bone once, and now you're going to take advantage of me, man. I agree with you. If, if there was a man, which is not me, because... I'm a one woman man, but if there was a man who decided to have multiple girlfriends, his approach certainly wouldn't be sitting down and saying it the way I'm saying it. The point I'm trying to make is I think that the idea of a man having a girlfriend who he loves and maybe sometimes stepping out is not nearly as offensive as the idea of a woman having a man she loves and sometimes stepping out. You know, I watched American Pie the other week and I thought that would have been the best time to be alive. You know, no, you 2003. Didn't. Like you can still call the people you care about if it's a real emergency, but no one's glued to their phone. Yeah. No one's scrolling social media. No one's trying to take an Instagram picture. Everyone's just at the crappy party, enjoying the crappy party. Like if you go to Dubai and you look around the bar, half the people aren't having fun. They're just purely yeah. trying to get Insta stories to, to look like they're having fun. Like mm -hmm. So it's pure like, ha 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 ha. Okay, so I think that a lot of people now are doing things not because they enjoy them, because other people will think they're having fun and it's more about creating envy as opposed to actually enjoying yourself. If you go on a really fun night out, you don't take your phone out. So when I see someone who went on a night out and took 20 stories dancing and laughing and, and having a great time, I know they're bored. Yeah, they're not in the moment. Do you know what I mean? Because if you really have a great night out, you don't take any stories and you, you forget to check your phone. Social media has completely and utterly changed the world. It's changed the way that we function. It's changed the way that we go out. It's changed even the places we go. Social media now runs the world. We live in an attention society and people will do anything for attention because attention is a currency and you can turn attention into money. Jake Paul mm -hmm. is not rich because he's a boxer. He's rich because he used the attention he gets and monetized it via boxing. So in the attention economy we now live in, you have to understand that your attention is valuable, especially as a man. And women are out here today trying to extract your attention from you without returning anything. 
That's what the male-female friendship is. In the old days, men would give attention in return for sex. But nowadays, men just give attention and don't get any sex back. And that's what you have to be very, very careful of. Your attention is extremely valuable. So for all the men out there, if you're following a woman and you have zero chance of f***ing her and she ain't replying to your DMs, stop following her. Like, when's the last time you truly, truly lived in the moment? I think I personally live in the moment a lot. All right, we're going to stop right there. I got I to hold off. You know, what I'm, I think what I'm going to do is this, guys. Um, there's about 30 minutes left of this interview. I think when I get Andrew in here to talk to him, we'll go through the next 30 minutes of this. I think I've done a pretty, pretty yeoman's work on the first 30 minutes of this, okay? Uh, I did include Jedediah in there a little bit, too. I, I wanted to point out the fact that, like, I'm also seeing a lot of, like, like Jedediah is finally, like, coming around to, the, like, red pill relationship topics, by the way. Surprise, surprise. Um, and, you know, I got to hold people's feet to the fire uh, no matter what. Um, I would very much like to uh, do an interview similar to this with Jedediah at some point, but... Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the the remaining 30 minutes of this, and I will I will uh, I promise you the next time I get uh, Andrew in here, and hopefully it'll be maybe uh, midweek, uh, possibly Thursday. We'll see. Um, I'll do my best to uh, have that 30 minutes set off there. That's fair use. Don't worry about it. I'm I'm good. It's all we're all good. I'm not worried about it. Thanks. Uh, 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 Sam, Sammy, thank you for being a, a great friend and a great participant in the, uh, thanks for uh, dropping the band hammer too. I did not see Torsha once and she's not banned. I don't know where she is. Oh, I think she's doing her own thing today. Um, she was also, by the way, Tori was doing a really good job on sort of tearing down uh, what's her face. Um, the m m moon cat. What the hell is that? Like, you get, like, oh, yeah, the local way spell. How can I spell my name in a better, different, different way? It's kind of not like a stripper. Uh, anyways, so there you go. Um, so I'm going to do my best. I'm I, uh, sorry if it seems like I baited you with this one. I really wanted to just sort of have this as a preface for when I do get it, but I promise you I will have him in. Um, I'm going to get him on. I'm going to start doing the panel show, which will end up being on uh, Wednesdays. Uh, we'll see how, how it works out for other people. Um, if, um, if Big Mo, if you're in the, uh, if you're still in the chat, uh, I would love to have you on the panel shows as well. Uh, I'll, I'll try to make it as convenient as I can, you know, for your schedule with with the boys. So um, let me know if you're available for that because I kind of look at Mo as sort of like one of the new mutants too. And like I, I it's I know I, I joke about this all the time. It's like I look at like Kevin and Rocky and I guess Mark too, <laughs> Nikki too, um, and Tor Tori and Sarah Davis and like uh, certainly Giovanni and um, Big Mo. And some of these are like these new guys. Okay, big mo. Good, 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 good. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll text you after the show, man. I, I want to get you on board. But I look at these guys as kind of like my new mutants, and I'm Professor X, right? Like my old team, I like my my X Men is still Rule Zero, and that's never going to change. Everything's cool. Just but I'm like I'm thinking like these guys deserve a, you know, at least a young blood show. Maybe even just once a month would be all right. But I would very much like I'm Professor X, right? And they're the new mutants, like. <laughs> Kevin, your cannonball. <laughs> Tori, your magic. Uh, I'm trying to think of who like who else would be the superheroes. I can't even, I can't even remember. Giovanni, you can be um, Sunspot. <laughs> Giovanni is Sunspot. Um, I'm trying to think of who else I could have on there. But anyways, um, I've got I've got guys that I I, I really think deserve at least uh, some sort of like a, a panelist kind of show. Like I said, even if it's just once a month for right now, maybe maybe every other week. We'll see how it goes, depending on what my schedule is. But uh, I really these are people that I want to buff out and I really want to show some appreciation to, and I would just have conversations. Right? It's it's always good to uh, it. Like people ask me all the time, they say, "Roller, don't you think you're going to run out of material?" And I'm like, "Well." No, I don't think so, because there's always going to be some new take on all this crap. But then also things come back in cycles. And so the people who are coming into these conversations right now, like for instance, like Jedi Abila, like I, I love her to death. I think she's great. But like uh, the conversation is not anything I haven't done before, but it is something that she hasn't done before. Right. Or maybe it's something that Kevin hasn't done before or Tori or Big Mo. Right. And so I want to get like new blood. I want to get what other people's in invitation, you know, what their, what, their, what their interpretation is on that. And yes, you are right. If you do not know who Giovanni Sanders is, Giovanni and August is his band, is his music, go check him out. Giovanni Sanders. Okay. He was with us at, uh, at the, uh, the CME in May. 
uh, very, very talented uh, musician, so, a guy that I, I really can appreciate his music. And so like, I, I would very much like to work with him on some of his songs too. I'm, you know, I kind of have low key want to want to want to want to create with him too. That's see, that's what I mean. Like you get the new, the young bloods in and you get creative. That's, that's the whole thing. Right. So anyways, um, that's it for me. Uh, Shion, Shion Reynolds, thank you for being such a good sport today. Um, I got to find somebody's got to tell me like how old is her? Uh, is Sammy, tell me how old her kid is. You got to, you got to dig up how old her kid is. So that's that. Um, Wednesday, uh, the uh, Patreon group counseling will be on the, uh, the, I believe I said the 13th, July 13th is when I'm going to do that. I will be in, um, a secret location in South Dakota. I'm not going to say the name because I know he doesn't want me to, but I will be hanging out with Aaron Clary live in person. We're going to do our own show. We're going to do our own version of Fresh and Fit from South Dakota. And we're going to call it Stale and Fat. Not Fresh and Fit. Stale and Fat. And we're going to go and we're going to find, let's see, 40, like uh, post-wall 40-something divorcees, soccer moms, Karens, if you guys want to be in the show, let us know. We'll have you on. We'll put you on. We don't have a Chris Pogson yet, but we'll, we'll figure something out, right? And we're going to have riveting conversations like holding these old roasties accountable for their lives' mistakes and why it is that they're doomed to spinsterhood and loneliness for the rest of their lives. So don't miss out on Stale and Fat featuring Rolla Tomasi and Aaron Clary live uh, let's see the eight. I'll be there from the 18th to the 21st. <laughs> I'm kidding. We'll do, we'll figure something out. I'm, I'm sure I'll probably do some sort of live stream or something going on with him, either from his studio or we'll just do some like Instagram stuff. So yeah. So watch out fresh and fit stale and fat is coming for you. <laughs> We're coming for your demo. <laughs> well, actually it's not your demo. I think that'll be fun. Stale and fat. Somebody give me a logo. Make a logo for me for stale and fat. That's what I should do. Also, Red Pill Lions, by the way, is going through the roof. And the reason is because the you know Ethereum is, is down. So you can get like a fire sale on the NFTs. And no, we didn't plan it that way, even though that's what a lot of uh, haters who will go nameless will say that we are trying to fiendishly plan to. We knew. Yes. Kevin and Rocky and myself and Mark, we we have the we looked into the Magic Eight Ball. When Magic Eight Ball? When will NFT? When will Ethereum bottom out? Next month. Oh, okay, cool. We'll start our we'll start our NFT right now. Yes, we have that kind of prognostication. Rollo Domus knows when the market is going to change and when it's going to bull market and. Bear market. Yes, sure. Thanks. Keep going. However, Red Pill Lions is doing great. I am on the Discord quite a bit. So if you guys want to do like live chats, if you want to talk to me, like I, I and you got to throw, thank you for, by the way, for that $500 super chat. That was awesome today. But if you want to, like, if you catch me on Discord and I'm doing something with the boys, uh, we're uh, giving away signed copies of the book right now uh, as for, for NFT holders. Again, right now, I mean, Ethereum is pretty low. So if you want to go pick, we are selling, well, they are selling like M&Ms right now. So do go and get one. And uh, I assure you that it will go up in value. <laughs> Trust me. Um, you know, had we known, we probably would not have uh, launched it on, you know, the beginning of May. So anyways, go check that out. Red Pill Lions. You can see the, uh, the, the uh, link for um, the, if you want to buy, if you want to purchase uh, an NFT, uh, just go to redpilllions.com. You can see it right there. It's in the, the second link down. And then uh, if you want to join the Discord server, that's also the third link down that's in there too. Um, and then also I want to point out that we're doing like some crazy stuff with, uh, with Red Pill Lions, some fun stuff. They just sponsored a, a boxing match. Um, but go if you if you want to see the video, go look up Red Pill Lions on Instagram, and you could see the video and everything that they did. It was pretty funny. Um, but we do we we're not just like oh we're gonna grab the money and run. We do lots of fun things. Like I'll give it. I'll, I'll talk to you online. Um, I'm trying to get to a point where it's like I'm gonna do one on ones as for NFT holders. Um, I'm doing um what else? Oh, signed books is another thing. I'm once these are once the original series sells out, I've already got a limited series that I am doing personally the art for. Um, and the boys don't even know this. That I'm doing the art for right now that we're going to have an, a limited, uh, a limited run at some point. We'll see, um, well, you know how it goes. Um, but again, oh, and then finally, last but not least, 
um, Audible. The book is coming out this week. It was uh, out for approval with um, with Audible right now. And uh, so it is on its way. Uh, I sent it in on the 6th of July from the hotel room where I was like deathly sick. So um, do I, I thank you for your patience. I know I said it would be out by June. And the recording was done <laughs> before June to trace credit. It was definitely done. It was like, on, I think it was June 29th or 28th is when I got it. And then we submitted it, came back, submitted it again, came back. So now we're good to go. As far as I can tell, nothing's been kicked back to us just yet. Uh, we'll probably I'll have more news by uh, Monday as to when the Audible is coming out. However, that said, please uh, do go and, and pick up the new book. And let's see, what else do I have going on? I think that's about it. I will see you guys on the midweek show and the midweek show will probably be Thursday because I've got uh, the Patreon group this year again for this week. And then remember uh, also uh, counseling. If you want one-on-one, -on -one, the best thing to do is to email me at RT rational mail at the email. It's all my contact information is in the description. And if you want, private one-on-one -on -one counseling just put counseling in the subject line of the email and then it'll come to me i'll give you the policy you'll get the policy email back and then you could see what i charge and you could see what the the stipulations are and everything else you can check that out so do check that out as well again audible coming out very very soon thank you guys for watching i very very much appreciate you guys and again i will leave you with this great song called it's actually called black mountain thank you very much <laughs> Sitting podcast has been a production of the rationalmail.com. Register trademark 2022. Thanks for listening.